We're back. Just did 20 minutes for everybody, for for people in, in studio. We got Joe Rogan, we got Ari, and now we got Chuck Liddell. The Iceman. The Iceman. <laughs> he was confirming the story. They didn't let you walk through fucking St. Patrick's Day Parade with your green hair. Yeah, they gave me a great green <laughs> beret. <laughs> Knitted beret. Knitted beret. It looked great. Because that <laughs> looks normal. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that was makes, much better than having it. I've been sitting there for two hours waiting to get on and walk, walk on the, in the parade. And then at last minute, I'm walking out and the guy's grabbing me. You can't You can't walk on the parade. You can't walk like that. And Why? So I, well, I don't know, because I got a mohawk and it was green. I don't know which That's one of the two. I don't know what. Green mohawk. It wasn't mohawk. Catholic enough or something. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. That's what they told me. Yeah, apparently there's a no hair dye rule. Ridiculous. I never knew that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I had no sworn. idea. I, no one told me. If I was asked, I would have said, yeah, there's plenty of people with their hair dyed marching in there, but I guess not. More government intruding into the man's life. What happened with the whole gay thing with the parade? What was like the that gay used thing? to be a it used to be a big issue that the gays always wanted to march in the St. Patty's Day parade. Really? And every year it was a giant issue. Like, no, we're not letting. Nice. The, if you're gay and you want to be in the parade, you got to be in as you know the, part of this thing and and just be a gay guy marching with this group. But they wanted like the gay group to march, and it was always a big thing. But now it, that just kind of went away. I think Same. the gays just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> just gave up on it. They realize how it. ridiculous it is. Yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. Going as a gay contingent. Thing. Yeah, well, the whole point is St. Patrick's Day. It's not whether or not you fuck guys. Yeah, it, it didn't make any sense. So I guess they gave up. Fuck them. So this is St. Patrick. The church just doesn't want you. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it really they is. don't want you guys. Yeah, regardless of, you know, you could say what God's intent is with the gay guys, the church doesn't like you. Yeah. You could really just say that. I don't know what God's opinion on gay guys are, <laughs> but the church hates you. <laughs> just, <laughs> it pretty just much does. Uh, I, you know, not very open-minded when it comes to that. It's funny how many fucking gay people there are in the church, though. That's what's really weird. You well, would like, figure that they would make it kind of easier on gays. In my, really, in my opinion, if you want to take a vow of celibacy, there's got to be at least some confusion as to your sexuality. Yeah. You, you, if you're saying, I, I think I could go my entire life with no pussy, eh, yeah. Eh, you, you, yeah, what's going I think on you're there. denying what you want, and <laughs> and you know you're in that middle ground of uh, I don't want pussy, but I better not jump on the cock. Let me let me Who's go that? become yeah. a clergy. Controversial <laughs> priest. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that controversial priest? He's really really popular in Miami. Really, uh, uh, some charismatic young uh, priest. They caught him with a woman, and he's in a lot of trouble because woman. of that. Wow. So he had a he left the Catholic <laughs> Church. Yeah, that was, they, they frowned upon wow. that. Yeah, they, they should keep that guy. And he. You know, he gave a speech about it. He was like, look, they're all gay. He's like, the priests are all gay. Like, it's like, it's a yeah, huge that, that... contingency of gay people. Gay people and kid fuckers. That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, that's really what it is. It's ridiculous that, you know, that's, it's even controversial to, to say that. I know, yeah, because you say that and you think, oh, am I going to get... But, but uh, come on, look through history. Could you imagine if NASCAR drivers fucked as many kids as priests did? They would shut down NASCAR. They sure yeah, wouldn't be riding anymore, right? They wouldn't yeah. just move them to another state. You're yeah. going to have to race, race in West Virginia Those now. Fucking, yeah. the, uh -huh. the cars, all you'd see is a paint job on them. <laughs> there wouldn't be one sponsor sticker <laughs> on anything. <laughs> anything. It's, a, it's amazing, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That is just they, a bunch of pink cars going around <laughs> yeah. in circles. They can just keep doing it. Wow, look at that. They got a Geiger counter on some kid's head in Japan. They had some kid at the airport, and they, the guy with a big glove on. Oh, with that on. shower head yeah. thing they've been fucking just scanning people with? They scanned his little head. <laughs> his little head. To see if he's radioactive. Well, they're saying they can't really tell if you've ingested anything radioactive by putting that fucking detector uh, by your head and by your body. They can tell if you've been in a radioactive uh, surroundings, but they can't tell how much you've ingested, how long you've been in the area. I was talking before, it's Shep Smith, or yeah, yeah Shep uh, Smith on uh, Fox News. He's going to glow in the dark. The guy has been there for since it happened. He's constantly right near the reactor. Wow. Even Anderson Cooper isn't going to Japan. No. No. No, no, he was there. Was he? <laughs> well, but but he, he goes came, everywhere dangerous. Yeah, he was that there. Fuck. No, they had a video. I think he came back. Though. They had a video of him going. Should I leave? Yeah. <laughs> should I get out of here? Should I get out of here? Because new info was coming in, and he just broke character. Like, should I be here? What happened to that chick in <laughs> Egypt that got beat up and sexually assaulted? Uh, yeah. that was, that you did they release the story of what exactly happened? You, you won't see her no more. Yeah, that's I a, don't know. That's she, just, she yeah, just went away. Uh, she got pinched really hard. Was one of the descriptions. Pinched she, in her vagina. I guess. Did I think her ni like that? her nipples. I think they were I think doing they things to her the nipples, nipples really hard. They were biting her tits fucking, and really. Fucking, oh yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, they, they said sure it went on guys. for like a half an hour, too. Yeah. That Jesus means, Christ. That means a few guys. And there a sick party that hears shit like that and goes like, wow. <laughs> like, like, like every <laughs> you had the folks folks listening at home you had to see Anthony's face there was a, a bit of nostalgia in his eyes you might want to explain a little bit there. Uh, a little look, further I, I would never like make light of the the horror that this woman went through and and that other women go through uh, when the, when they're being sexually assaulted but when you just read the story and take the humanity out of the mix yeah. I don't know who this person is i just know it's female a and male <laughs> b through z <laughs> uh just, you know do anything it's just this twisted kind of perverse sick and, and it, there's something titillating about you it you want to bring it down to caveman shit yeah yeah caveman there's style. no fucking laws or anything doesn't but matter it's not caveman shit because it's a suppression shit it's a, you're yeah. not supposed to be doing this shit it's not like a nature shit no it is it is a, you're not supposed to be doing yeah. it it's very bad it's 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 an evil nature's thing. a one-on-one -on -one, but did I we go just fuck you shoot a load in you and make a baby that's yeah, natural yeah. but yeah. did we decide it's nature you know what i mean or is it nature shit where you're supposed to just fucking be an animal like that well you know there's a lot of did that we left decide over. that it's not not yeah. okay mm -hmm. the real reality of, of human bodies is that we have the same genetics that they had back when they were running from saber-toothed tigers and yeah. fucking stabbing right. woolly mammoths with sticks. But we like to think because we've got more knowledge as because far we have as smartphones. Yeah. That yeah. We're we're, I mean, we're fighting it. We we're still basically have an fighting those monkey yeah. that urge. Yeah. We call it the perv switch. Yeah, it's and in some there. guys lose the fucking battle with the perv switch. Well, nature oh. and the perv switch are two totally different things. A lot of the perv switch comes from suppression. Yeah, you know, a yeah. lot of it comes from this this sort of rebounding. It's like Catholic school girls. When I was in high school, those, oh my God, those they freaks, fucked they fucked the like most. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The, my, the craziest chick I ever <laughs> dated was when I was in high school. It was a Catholic school girl. This chick fucked everybody who asked. Anybody who tried to fuck her, got to fuck her. If you dragged a dick on the ground across her, it would be like a kitten with a ball of yarn. She would just dive on it. She was a fucking whore. By the time we were like 20, she'd already had three abortions. Wow. Yes. Oh, this bitch fucked this everybody. Catholic girl, huh? And she couldn't help it. She couldn't help herself. She had a look in her eyes like she was hypnotized. It was, <laughs> and it was the suppression of... She uh... fucked her. I was dating her, and she <laughs> fucked one of my friends. I came home. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning. They were parked in front of my house, and my buddy was fingering her in the oh, car. And man. I slammed my hand on the hood of the car. I go, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I got in my car, and I drove off. <laughs> yeah. That... Fingering her in the front seat. This bitch was crazy. And it was all Catholic school. Just wow. fucking wonked her head. Her whole family was everything every time if somebody sneezed there's fucking everybody made the crucifix yeah, yeah. sign yeah you know a, a, you know a, a car honked its horn oh jesus everybody was <laughs> i knew was a, i knew a crucifix. family like that and it, it was a lot of girls sisters and all all raised like strict catholic family where when we wanted to go to the movies we couldn't just pull up to the house we had to come in the house we couldn't pick the girl up just by beeping the uh, horn and stuff. Yeah. Had to come into the house. It's the yeah. mother and father there. Yeah. And then they asked what movie were we seeing. And they would look in the Catholic Digest to see if the movie was uh, rated by the Catholic Digest. And some of them were rated condemned. Like, he, the movie's <laughs> fucking condemned. Like the so we could say, say, yeah, C something like that rating. would be just condemned. So we'd have to say we were going to see a movie that uh, was, was rated within, you know, the, the, the parameters that they wanted. Yeah. And the fucked up thing is we never went to the movies. We'd go park behind, like, Leahy Junior High and just <laughs> fuck in the car. <laughs> and get blown down, and then come home and, like, we'd have to get a synopsis of the movie. And, yeah, it was great. And That's time hilarious. it out right and get home. But, like you said, just the most horrible. They would send us up, and the parents were oblivious. They thought, you know, because they were raising them like this, that they were perfect. Me and a bunch of my friends would go out with these sisters, because they were all sisters, uh, take a station wagon upstate New York to a cabin that the parents owned. And the parents wanted an equal number of guys to girls. They said, no, you can't go unless there's another guy, which was the oddest thing. It's like, why would you... That doesn't make sense. You're just, you're just gearing up for a good fuck fest with your, your daughter. And it was. We would go up there and they would be like, you know. It was. It's a great it's place. Place. Yeah. It was. Oh. oh, it was just, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You know no one's going to fuck things up. That was like when you, in your youth, you'd, you'd, you'd stay up all fucking night. If you were in bed with a chick and, and like, 
you knew nothing was interrupting it, you'd stay up all night because you were just like, I don't want this to fucking... It. This is great. It's like yeah. five in the morning, the sun's coming up, and you're like, motherfucker, why can't it be fucking midnight again? Yeah. It was just the greatest <laughs> thing. You'd have to get up and go back to fucking... Not getting laid for a month. <laughs> it's tough growing up. Fucking tough shit, I went man. On a, I had a six-month dry spell when I was 19. Oh. It, was, it was very scary. Very wow. scary. You just kind of come to the, the, the thing of, like, am I ever going to get ever. laid again? It's never going to happen again. It's terrible. And when I finally got it in again, I, I lasted a half a second, maybe. <laughs> and then yeah. I was like, is this is the rest of my life. You know, because I already know it's out of school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to be premature ejaculation guy. Yeah, Great. Like, is this what I have to look at his life over? Is it really like Great. a John Cougar Mellencamp song? <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was a girl that didn't want to uh, fuck once. I, I was spending the weekend with her. And I, I, we were in our late teens. And... Uh, the first night, she was like, yeah, we could sleep together and stuff and get all naked and stuff. But I wanted to fuck her. And she was like, no, I, I don't know and stuff. So I just had <laughs> m fucking mega rod all night, <laughs> all night. It's just, it's fucking dripping crazy glue uh, all fucking night long. Just a wreck. Turgid. Turgid. A turgid Pulsating one. teen penis that I had. It was great. <laughs> when that ligament is all tight up top, you know, back in the good old like days. Like anime? Uh, oh, it was fantastic. Was it like anime cock? You couldn't even push it down like a quarter of an inch. Jesus. I think it was just wah. And uh, so uh, the next day I wake up, blue balls like a motherfucker. I like I couldn't even walk. And then the next night, we're in bed again, naked, and then she's finally, you know, had enough drinking, I guess, where she's like, okay, let's, let's do this. And I'm like, oh, oh. Dude. <laughs> it was saved up now for a whole fucking a night of, of having a rod and not being able to come. And then that I swear that the, the head touched the fucking lips and <laughs> bah, just gone all over. I fire hosed her. The good news uh, is you're good to go in another 20 minutes. Exactly. Not even, I don't even think I lost my rod. It was just like, fuck you. You're fucking. You're fucking. Back in there. Didn't worry about anything either. Yeah, no rubber, no nothing. a couple times in my life I've gone the, the two loads with one rod. It's yeah, a yeah. very rare occurrence. Yeah, it's, like, it's, oh, it's, it's going, going on, on here. You gotta, that's that's got to be... Like a, a brand new girl. Very excited. <laughs> you got to be really excited about what you're doing. Well, yeah, that's not some yeah. 20th anniversary shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't come with one of those anniversary cards where it's like, I'm sorry I don't tell you I love you as much as I should. I love the apology cards. That's great. I'm, I'm, I don't say it as much as I should, but no, I love you. Here, I'm giving you two fucking orgasms with one rod. Uh, Ain't happening. <laughs> Liddell's enjoying himself, too. Uh, uh, yeah, Chuck, you have anything Chuck, to add or what? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't no, Chuck's hanging. Chuck's hanging. Hey, he's just happy he doesn't That's have to great. wear that goofy hat from can yesterday, we, man. Can we get back Damn. to that video, Ari's video? Do we oh have someone that was what butthole? Was that? Ari's butthole? It's, butthole. it's called Chuck Ari's. Chuck need to see that. Shit cover, deformed <laughs> yeah, asshole. Yeah. Really Chuck's a sensitive guy. He doesn't need to see this. <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. Can we get one of the guys to pop that up for us? Is it right there? No, it's not here. I'll look for it. All right. Well, I mean... You know, so it's... everybody knows about the UFC Strike Force buyout, Ooh. right? What do you think about that, Joe? It's pretty amazing. It's good. It's exciting. I like it. right? I, what I like is that these guys are going to get to fight. You know, right? It's, like it's going to take a while. They're going to have to figure out. You know, the the contracts have to run out on these fighters, and mm -hmm. you know, and Showtime and all that, and work all that stuff out. Mm -hmm. But now all the best fighters are all under one organization. Yeah. And, yeah, you, know, you get some of those dream bouts you wanted to yeah. say. Well, who, yeah, who, the fans always win when that happens. Yeah, right? yeah. Who Just, are you looking uh, forward to seeing fight that was, wasn't able to? Uh, Alistair Overeem. I'm looking forward to seeing him fight as yeah. a heavyweight. Chuck knocked him out, though, back in the day. Knock him the thumbs up. Him the fuck like out. Chuck in the day. That was a <laughs> great day, fight. Yeah. That was a great fight in Pride. Um, yeah, that was that was a that was a fun one, you know. Yeah, Al Star's a bad motherfucker. He's ever since he got to heavyweight too, he's been doing much better. He's much he's huge now. He's like two sixty, two fifty five. He's, right. he's enormous. But he does very well. He won the Grand Prix, uh, the K one Grand Prix. So as a striker, he's like one of the top strikers. Like as far as like, being successful as a striker mm. and as a mixed martial arts guy, he's the heavyweight champ of Strike Force, and he won the Grand Prix for K one. So that's a that's a big deal. Shit. He's the one I'm most excited about seeing. Gilbert yeah. Melendez. Does another one, Nick Diaz, Fedor. Where, where are we at with that? Fedor, you know, I, I think Fedor should be fighting at 205. I mean, Fedor's smaller than Chuck. I mean, Chuck, you know, obviously longtime 205 champion. I mean, you walk around like what 225 something like that. About 230. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what Fedor fights at, but fat. You know, and Chuck's not <laughs> fat walking around at 225, 230. I mean, frame wise, the guy could be a middleweight, right? 
Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he's, he, yeah. Wow. Do you see some of the guys like, you know, like uh, like Rich Franklin, the guy who cuts a lot of weight to get down to 185? Yeah. Physically, he's probably bigger than Fedor, you know? But Fedor, a, he's a bad motherfucker, no doubt. But he's too small for the biggest guys mm. in the division. That Bigfoot Silva fight proved that to me. I mean, that fucking giant motherfucker got on top of him <laughs> and was hammer fisting him into oblivion. And I was like, you know, Shit. like this is a, this is a mismatch weight yeah. wise. There's no way this guy. We got one guy who's cutting down from 285, 290 to get to, two, to 265 weight class, and you got another guy who's fat at 230. It just yeah. doesn't line up. You know, he's just too. After huh. a while, I mean, in the old days, you could pull that off. But when, when it gets to a certain point, the competition gets fierce. You have to be as big as you can for your division. You have to be, you know, as in shape as possible. You can't be walking around with a big belly and, you know. Yeah, It yeah. looks great, you know. It's kind of <laughs> fun. That this it's this kind guy of with a big gut right. was knocking everybody out, you know. Right, right. Why don't like they, they fought Brett class? Rogers. Why don't they add a middle weight class? They should. I, I agree. I think maybe they will eventually. I think somewhere around, what do you know, like 225, 230? Think that's a good idea? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. So they could. Yeah, they could do that. They do that. In the, there's some the guys that are. You know, there's. You, you see, you like stand next to a guy like Brock. You know, and you see Brock and Brock next to Fedor. That's a mm -hmm. different weight class. Sure. There's yeah, just a yeah, different obviously. weight class. No huh. question. But then a guy like Kane, Kane Velasquez, is only about 240, and you know, and, he, and he'd beat the shit out of Brock. Yeah. So nice guy, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that, that guy. We, we liked Kane. Uh, yeah. He's, he's yeah, a he motherfucker. <laughs> he's <laughs> a motherfucker. Really nice in person. That guy, they were talking about that guy for years before he he's broke got, out onto the got, scene. He's like, creepy conditioning for yeah. heavyweight. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. Just doesn't get tired. Doesn't get <laughs> he tired. outworks like middleweights, lightweights. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's like he's the, like the most conditioned guy in the gym, apparently. So he can he's uh, a, a lot of stamina. He can... Yeah, he. You know, it's funny. His his trainer. They said this after uh, the Ben Rothwell fight. He fought Ben Rothwell, and Rothwell was upset that they stopped the fight. He was just getting the fuck beat out of him. I mean, sure. Cain Velasquez is just all over him. And then uh, Javier Mendez says, "Well." They were probably thinking that the storm was going to end eventually, but the storm never ends with Kane. Jeez. <laughs> Just the <laughs> fucking thought of the storm never ends. <laughs> you never hear that. never stops never fucking punching you and <laughs> kicking you until you're <laughs> beating the fuck out of your head. He doesn't get tired. I've never uh, seen a, a heavyweight that has that kind of conditioning. Wow. What about yeah. UFC 128? What do you like? We, we talked to Jones on the phone. He was a cool guy. He's um, it's it's a very interesting. He's got more hype behind him, I think, than anybody I've ever seen in in the history of the division. Like young contenders coming up, mm -hmm. you know, with a, a limited amount of fights. I mean, when Chuck was uh, a contender before, you know, Chuck was the uncrowned champion before. I mean, everybody always, you know, although people behind the scenes knew that he was going to beat Tito when he fought him. You know, mm -hmm. it was always it was always known yeah. that eventually one day they're going to have to get him together. So it was like Chuck had so much experience before he got there. But John Jones has only been doing MMA for three years. Wow. That's the that's the ridiculous nothing, right? thing. Huh. I mean, he's just gone from you know from the first fight with Andre Guzmao all the way through to the last fight with Ryan Bader and never been in a tiny bit of trouble. Well, they learned on the shoulder, you guys, who had to pretty much learn on your own what what the best thing to do, best training, yeah. um, you know, best mixture of of uh, yeah, martial it was, arts. It was created back in the days. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was trial and error kind of a thing, you know? You realize you can't just go in there knowing one thing because this guy's going to come in and fucking put you on the mat and kill you. Uh, but now I guess these guys are, are getting better in a shorter period of time, which will give them, I guess, longer careers. Well, they see right away when you, you enter into the sport right now, you see full, complete mixed martial artists. Mm -hmm. And those are the guys that people are imitating. Like, and kids from now, like there's, the, there's uh, this commercial to, uh, with these uh, kids that train at the tap out gym. These, these kids are like seven, eight years old. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that commercial? I've seen that shit. <laughs> these motherfuckers. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. Hitting flying arm bars yeah. and <laughs> high kicking each other. And they're little kids. You yeah. Know? They're learning MMA from the beginning. You know? Seven, yeah. eight years old. Can you imagine? Jesus. I was there for, for Chuck's debut. What Chuck was different, the difference between Chuck and all the other guys before him is that all the other wrestlers were trying to take the fight to the ground and they would get on top of right. you and pound on you. But what Chuck did was make guys stand up. That was like the first yeah. time that anybody well, ever done I, that. I always said, yeah, well, when I came in, like, when you came in, there's three different elements you had to learn. And most people came in with one and learned the other two. I came in with two and had to learn, learn one. I had to learn jiu-jitsu. So, I mean, I had that advantage in the beginning. And I, I was able to keep guys strike. They were wrestlers striking with me. They weren't yeah. comfortable. That, and plus it puts them somewhere where they're uncomfortable because they're not used to striking. Mm -hmm. They're not used to being there. And it frustrates them that they can't take me down. Uh -huh. I was there for Chuck's debut. And the funny thing was they found out that Chuck was a wrestler right before I go out. Tell them, John Peretti. Yeah, John Peretti comes up to me up. I found out I was a wrestler before I got. He's like, um, you know, if you want to come back, you need to stick, you need you need to keep this on your feet. 
because I'm fighting a boxer. I'm like, uh, okay, I, I'll, I'll try. Yeah, they used to make guys do things. They used to make guys stand like this. This was fam famous for the Elite XC, that company that went under that was banking on Kimbo Slice and all oh, that. Oh, right, stuff. right, yeah, they, yeah. They, you know, they used to have a ground clock where if you were on the ground for like 30 seconds, a little alarm would go off and they would no, stand you back up. They made you stand up? Yeah, wow. there's, 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 like, it was famous. Gary That's Shaw like, would tell people backstage, you know, they reported on it. They would tell them, oh, keep bullshit. this fight standing, you know, we want to want to see a good knockout. I remember a lot of times I, I saw when when Chuck would fight, which always perplexed me, you'd get a guy, he'd be on his back, and you'd be smashing him in the face, and I'd be like, this guy's done. And then you'd back off and, well, and, usually, and let the I, guy get up. And I'm doing, like, why are you letting him get You fucking have him. I want to play with him And I'm trying bit. to put him away, and, and I have him hurt. Mm -hmm. I figure out he's not quitting right now, and I just step back because I figure I can hurt him better standing up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Can you All right. imagine? All right. It's a calculated maneuver. I, yeah, I guess so, because I was always like, oh, he's pounding him. This guy's just got yeah, him. He's fighting enough, so they're not going to stop it. All right, get back up, because I've got him hurt. I don't want to let him rest down there. You're probably thinking All about right, the Jeremy Horn fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, he was laying down there, and you were pounding his face. Yeah, because I guess now he's got to stand up, and now yeah, he, he can't just lay there. back and worry. About, now he's got to worry about his legs and everything. Yeah, sometimes when guys get a guy hurt and then they get on top of him, the guy can grab a hold of you and wrap a hold of you even mm -hmm. from the bottom and save himself. Yeah. And just kind of clear his cobwebs out as a first if he's actually standing up with you. <laughs> so Chuck was just like, all right, get up, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm going to punch you standing up. <laughs> yeah, I got some other. Oh. I figure I can put, I can hit him harder standing. So yeah. hit him up. I've got I'm wow. accurate. So. Well, it, wow. it works. So, so, so you're obviously taking Shogun over Jones, huh? No, no, I'm not. No, oh. no I don't know. I misread what you were saying. No, then. I just said there's an amazing amount of hype behind this kid i mean he's look the reason the hype is behind him is because he's incredibly talented right i mean we, i always describe him as like an insect and not in a bad way but like you ever see an ant move like something big they do it like effortlessly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's what it's like with this kid he like he tosses people around and he does it like effortlessly it's like yeah. it's weird how strong he is like he grant he does this um he he, he 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 does this thing where he gets guys in double overhooks and he flips them through the air where their feet are over his head is a lateral drop and Holy but the way he executes shit. it it's like hardly anybody does that in mma and not yeah. the way this kid does it and he does it on high level guys and sends them flying through the air and it doesn't even look down. like he's straining like doing it he takes wow, everyone down up. i mean no one had been able to control ryan bader the last guy that he fought like mm -hmm. that right. he just takes him down gets on top of him squashes him <laughs> chokes him. him who do you want yeah. chuck uh you know i I'd like to see both the guys. I think it's gonna be a good fight. I don't necessarily want it one guy or the other. It'd be interesting to see. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a test for uh, mm, for Jones, Jones. but uh, right. but you know he he's he's a tough kid. I've only only seen a couple of his fights, right. but he's a tough kid. Man. What, what he's physically so talented, but uh, Shogun's an assassin. Shogun mm -hmm. is a real professional. Like Jones got in his face at the uh, weigh-in. It was kind of at the press conference, kind of interesting. Oh. And he got like right in Shogun's face, and Shogun just turned away. Like, oh, I'm really? Not well, even, I'm not, not going to play this. Deal with deal with yeah, I'm not going to look at you. I'm not doing this. Oh, yeah. Shogun's been around a long time. Yeah. You just made that fight even more interesting. Oh, what Shogun's an assassin. What other fight you like Saturday? Tomorrow, I guess, already. Wow. <sighs> what else is on the card? Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber and Eddie Uriah, Wineland. That's yeah. a great fight. Eddie, Eddie Wineland was, at one point in time, the 135-pound champion, and he's trying to get back to it, and Uriah dropped down to 135. Uriah is a fucking beast at 135. Yeah. That's a great fight. What else is on the card? I don't know. I gotta look it up. The fuck, Ari. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta Reed? look it up. What else is on the card, Reed? <laughs> What's that? Kamal Miller. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim Miller and Kamal Shalaruz. Jim oh, Miller from New Jersey. He's a fucking animal. New Jersey guy. Huh? That kid's a savage. I love that kid. <laughs> Him and his brother, Dan Miller, and Dan Miller fights Nate Marquardt. There's a lot of good fights. It's a good card. Yeah. I'm where's uh, it. where's Dana? Why didn't uh? He was, was probably he, was busy with the merger, you know, because the, they just bought Strike Force like a couple of days yeah. ago. So it's just, I think it came out on Tuesday. Is that what it was? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I, yeah. I heard Were there any differences, before, though, with Strike Force? Like that uh, they rules? might have, yeah, that they might have trouble incorporating into it? Only elbows. They, they didn't allow elbows. They didn't allow the elbows. Ground. Okay. How do, you, how do you feel about that? Some guys don't like elbows because they think they, that it stops fights because it cuts. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, I don't like taking anything out anymore, but I mean, it's. But, uh, I mean, I thought when they took knees to the head on the ground out, 
I think if you're going to take one out over, I think they should have left that in and let and took out. Oh, take out yeah. the knee to the head. A knee to the head. That <laughs> one, I remember seeing those and just going, oh, oh. But you God. know, but it was you guys great want to, to see watch. It. It to keep oh, people from shooting God. though. You <laughs> land a few of those the first shot, the second <laughs> they uh, yeah. shoot again. <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> did I hear that's that right? True. Chuck is bummed that they took the knee to the head out. Yeah. Well, you don't know. Oh, Chuck fought old school Valley too. I know. I know. No gloves. He fought Pele in Brazil in one of those old school Valley oh, Tudo tournaments Jesus. where they had they oh, fought shit. in a ring and the bottom rung of the ropes yeah. was a net so that you couldn't slide <laughs> out under. So oh, Pele shit. is stuffed into the corner in the net and Chuck is just <laughs> smashing <laughs> yeah. him through the net. It's <laughs> one of yeah. the but most brutal fights ever. I gotta see that. Is it online still? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Alright, good. I gotta check Chuck that out. Chuck Liddell versus one, Pele. One 30 minute round. Yeah. Really? Wow. 30 oh, minute but... round. Wow. Bare knuckle. Wow. That's just stomp, like, yeah, that's soccer th kicks, everything. That's fight club shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's in Brazil. Yeah. You know, no his, one's his, stopping his, that. Uh, his, uh, <laughs> his manager was the uh, referee, by the way. I walked in, I walked out. Oh, no. <laughs> <walked> out. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what is that? Is that WWE? What the fuck is that? Some, fuck is weird, uh, some WWE shit. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> you want to hear some spooky shit about Brazil? Brazil has a very high rate of infestation of a, 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 of a toxin or a, um, a, um, a, a, a parasite called toxoplasma. And it's a cat parasite. And listen to this shit. There's a parasite that affects rats, and it makes rats sexually attracted to the smell of cat piss. Where they lose their mind, their balls swell up, and they can't wait to get around cat piss. They get around the cat piss, and obviously there's a cat there. The cat eats the rat, so the cat gets it. And then the cat gives it to people. When people touch cat shit, or when uh, the cat shit in the grass, and then you know somehow or another people get in contact with it. Well, when it affects human beings, it makes men more aggressive, it makes them jerks, and it makes them more sexually active, and it makes women more promiscuous, and it makes them more sexual. And it literally has infested 66% of the population of Brazil. I mean, if you look at Brazil, you look at their culture, that is Brazil. Yeah. The men are yeah. fucking animals. They're, they're, they're crazy. And the women, they all have big asses. And they're all sexual and promiscuous. Yeah, half naked, walking it's around. It's the fucking culture of Brazil <laughs> is shaped by a parasite. Based on fucking rats and cat That's shit. Fucked up. <laughs> it's crazy. Fucked up. Not only that, but they, they're also making a direct correlation between successful soccer teams and higher rates of infestation of toxoplasma because it makes the men can, more reckless. And they're, can they, they test for this? More yes, aggressive? Yes, they can. So they, they can test They know for, for sure that people have this. A lot of people wow. have it. 66 percent of the population Brazil, 50 million Americans are infested by wow. it, especially places, rural areas where there are a lot of wild cats. Yeah. Hey, uh, oh, man. I well, never heard pretty that. Pretty fucking nuts, man. But when you look, at, you look at Brazil, you go, why is this one country so wild and crazy? Yeah. It's a fucking worm in your brain. <laughs> There's the explanation. Literally. <laughs> One That's more. nuts, man. That is fucking That's nuts. It's fucking really nuts to wrap your head around Holy that, but it makes shit. sense. If you've been to Brazil yeah. and you see like how those people, it's a, it's a wild-ass place. Is it as wild yeah. as they say? I've never been. I've been to Sao Paulo. I got slapped by a transvestite. In a car, I was trying to take a picture of him, her, whatever. Yeah. She reaches in, smacks me in the fucking face, and starts screaming, and starts shaking the door. And I'm in a car with, like, ten trained killers. We're all <laughs> leaving the, the Abu Dhabi uh, the tournament. It was Mark Lehman's in the car, Big Country's in the car, <laughs> and I get bitch slapped. Big Country had a great picture of her. Bitch slapped by a fucking <laughs> yeah. tranny. I mean, she just had to make, like, a face, like this crazy made-up face, and she was a tranny. Like, they're <laughs> fucking nuts sexually. I'm sure, the, I'm sure the guys let you alone after that, right? They didn't bother you about what happened. Oh, we were all <laughs> laughing for days. It was hilarious. <laughs> they fucking didn't let that one go. I mean, she was she was begging for money or to suck cock or whatever. I don't know if Portuguese. It was something. It was something. Whatever. I don't know yeah, Portuguese. She, <laughs> it was, she wanted some, it was some form of attention. Something to do with the cock. Yeah. Hey, one more UFC question. I wanted to ask Dana, but we don't have him today. Uh, New York. What the fuck? New York's a it mess, been, man. It should have been done already. Yeah. Well, it's political. You know, I don't know yeah. what it is, but everybody knows. Is it the boxing thing? Is it way too strong? I this? don't know. It's a good question. I don't know the, the root of it all now, i don't know well the people that are making that decision of course trying to get ufc in new york would they go to jersey to check out how 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 it's run and how it's handled just <sighs> i don't to know get it, you know you would think a good so take on if it, it made yeah, sense they would have done plenty of that by yeah. now i mean it's been yeah. there enough times it's unbelievable you know? yeah we've been coming to jersey could you imagine you guys now. going to fucking madison square garden yeah that would be great that would be great and it should be you know it yeah. should be it's it's all guaranteed it's all corrupt politicians but last time we had dana and i and it's been a while now. He he was convinced it was right around the corner. Yeah. But 
It's yeah. it's not. Didn't didn't pass last time. You know, I don't know. I don't know how all this stuff What's works. What's left? New York and what what else? There's as a few far, other states. As far as right? the biggies. Yeah, talking about, there's three big ones. Uh was it Connecticut and we did Connecticut in the casinos, but yeah. that's an Indian Indian casino. Oh right, okay. It's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Don't have to pay attention yeah, they, to white they, man they law. Listen to yesterday. I don't know. Is but it? New York, it's ridiculous. You got Boston. The fact that you have boxing, right. Boston. You got Boston. Boston. yeah, yeah, Jordan. boxing here. Yeah. It's like the fact that this boxing is legal, but MMA is illegal. That's, that's that, just ignorant. We they say it every yeah. time when you get into the UFC a little bit. It, it's it's tough to watch boxing. I'm sorry. Yeah, it really is. It is. Although, you know, I do still enjoy a good boxing match because, you know, it's like I like a good jiu-jitsu match. You know, I like watching a good wrestling match, uh, you know, but there's, there's the the big picture of MMA where it's all together is more exciting than anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the, Hard the big ball that. of wax. Hard to argue that. But, you know, like I watched the Miguel Cotto, um, the Ricardo Mayorga fight last weekend. It was a good fight. It was interesting. It was a good, mm -hmm. good boxing yeah, match. Yeah, but like Ope says, I find it hard to even tune into boxing anymore. Because, you know what, you really don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can get the most boring fucking fight. It's a lot it's like, of what, what, what do you think happened in boxing? The, stop clinching, too, you motherfuckers. Too many belts. Hit each other. <laughs> That's definitely When we were growing up, it. we're all more or less the same age. When we were growing up, boxing was like, fuck. It was also because there was no MMA back then. True. If it was MMA yeah, back then, it yeah. would have taken over just like it took over now. Yeah. You think Muhammad Ali would have tried some MMA? He did. He fought he Antonio did. Inoki. He oh, no. Him that's when he was just on his fight. back the whole thing. Well, he <laughs> the wrestler the shit was. out of his legs. The yeah. wrestler was. That's it's right. a smart move. What do you want to do? Stand up with Muhammad you call Ali? That, <laughs> no. Would you call that... You call that he was trying MMA? I don't know. I mean, that it was, was kind something of a, different. That, that was kind yeah. of a, you know? a spectacle. Yeah, it was kind of a spectacle. The wrestler he, just stayed on his back and kicked the shit out of him. I LA. think if, you know, there was a situation like this now, uh, if it was in the in the 70s where there was like some guy like Cain Velasquez that was getting real popular and he was a heavyweight champion and then there was Muhammad Ali who was a heavyweight champion of boxing, yeah. Ali probably would have had to do it. He yeah, probably yeah. Would have been full, I mean, he's had such an incredible ego. Yeah, to he, be the, the greatest, yeah, he would have yeah. had to have... Uh, Just learn how to sprawl, you know? Yeah. <laughs> go down the pit, do a little training with Hackleman, work on some <laughs> we, techniques. We're going to take a quick break, and Ari's asshole awaits. It's right there oh, on the screen. Oh, great. He's in mid-wipe, so... Uh, I, you don't want to see it. Jew Clam, Jew Clam, uncensored, online, Google you, it. You don't want to see it, really? Yeah, you do. You, you do. want to see it, Chuck, after the break? You sure. can't it's not, unwatch it. It's not, it. It's it's not good. Remember, yeah. you Chuck cannot unwatch it. You're talking about a guy who fought bare knuckle in Brazil. He'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'll exactly. check it out. He'll look at some assholes. <laughs> All right, throw it up on the screen. All right, more with Joe Rogan. Are you <laughs> promoting anything, Joe? No. Joe Rogan on Twitter, but you have plenty of followers. Just happy to be here, man. Just happy to be here. followers. And Chuck, you promoting anything? Not really, no. Just hanging. I liked it. I like when guys just come by to hang. Uh, Penn might come by and hang today. Yeah, we'll see. You like Penn? Penn? Yeah, very Penn much. Penn rules. Penn's He's a good dude. I like that guy. All right. He was on Fear Factor. Was he? Yeah, him as in Teller. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Were you ever God on Mushrooms on uh, Fear, Fear Factor? Factor? No, just the weed. And I, I still never did, the weed. did it on the, on the Mushrooms. Did you ever stand up with, on Mushrooms? No. Yeah. Yeah, but not, <laughs> but not not real high. You were coming down from. It. I mean, I can't really uh, no. say. I, yeah. mean, I was able to talk, so it couldn't have been that strong. And did I see you on Dave Chappelle doing a street bit for him? Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was. A, I saw that the other day. Yeah. an old rerun of Chappelle, and you're like handing out like gift certificates or money or something. Um, we actually, I was I walking down was. the street. I was walking down the street. I was playing at Caroline's, just randomly walking down the street, and, and Dave Chappelle you. is there with a mustache on. Yeah. Okay. Go, what yeah, are you yeah. doing? Hey, Joe. <laughs> I'm handing out things for New York boobs. You want to be on my show? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure, man. What, what do I got to do? Was it buttons or something? Yeah, if buttons. they had nice boobs? You got great New York boobs. Right. And all and of a sudden, so, Joe Rogan is handing the button to Chappelle's <laughs> character. So I'm like, what are you doing? I, you know, he's such an eccentric guy, man. I really wish he would uh, start, like, really touring. He's yeah. the, he basically sort of shows up at places and does sets. He brings a know? band with him now. Yeah, does I heard he? about that. Yeah, yeah, brings a band with him, some weird bluesy jazz To, to band. walk away from what he had going is Not just, just walk amazing. Away from that. He's one of the greatest comics of our generation. You yeah. Know? Yes. I mean, yeah. there's, there's a few guys that you look at and you go, well, that, these guys are like the, yeah, at the he's... top of the heap. Yep. You know? And he was one of them. Absolutely. If, and know? just, yeah, he just walked away. And he had a really him. good gig. It wasn't yeah. like a two and a half men situation where maybe creatively you're a little embarrassed, but well, he, the, he was doing some good shit. Oh, my when God. When I did his yeah. show, when I did the Fear Factor thing, he was telling me that they were giving him a hard time, that they would tell him, like, how many times he could say nigger, and they wanted him really? to stop saying nigger, and they wanted, they would, they start fucking around because they think they can, look, what if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're, you got a idiots. hit show, and you got a bunch of people that are saying, look, we want to advertise, but we want to ensure that our, you know, idiots. product is not being misrepresented. 
presented. Yeah. Do you think you can tone down the blackie? You think you can yeah. figure out a way yeah, to like get make him? it just as funny. Keep doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But do you, it by dance rules. Make yeah. it funny. Keep it funny. But uh, you know, we could we could fit within these uh, parameters Ugh. so we could advertise. You know, we'll all make money, and it'll <laughs> shut up. Suits, bro. Oh, they're Suits. the worst. And you know, when you're trying to like figure out what's funny and what's not funny, you can only leave that to comedians. You yeah. Can't, Suits, you can't see, look at it and go, if I water it down, it'll still be funny, no. but then it'll be more lucrative, and let's figure out a, a comfortable medium, because it won't be funny, and it'll piss off the comic, right. and you know, Chappelle just wound up getting tired of it all. That's amazing, and, and the, the dignity to walk away from that and say, fuck you. He clearly wow. doesn't give a fuck, because he nah, could be yep. touring and selling out stadiums, and instead he just shows up at comedy clubs like unannounced. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, fuck it. And does like five <laughs> hour sets. Yeah, and he's happy with Really? Something, All yeah. the time. We need a Chuck Liddell uh, for these meetings with the suits. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll see it our way. That's it. Oh, God. Chuck's too friendly. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck's intimidating as fuck, but then when you get around him, you're like, guy, he's so normal and nice. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, nice you, guy, you, damn you it. need some we, fucking brooding Mike Tyson character that might bite somebody's <laughs> ear off at any yeah. moment. We, we have a short list of guys that scare the shit out of us the first time we saw him, and certainly Chuck. It took a while oh, yeah. for us to relax around him. Because the first time you came in, you were breathing like a bull and... Had that look, and we're like, "Fuck." Well, you to find yourself he's more easygoing now that you've retired. Uh, I guess probably. I mean, it just depends. I mean, I think other times I come in, I had a fight coming up, so I was kind of in fight mode, training. Yeah, right. yeah, oh, yeah, right. training right. mode. You don't have to be yeah, in that. A little bit, a little. It's always a little more. I never noticed it, but all my friends always. Did. Oh fuck just, yeah, man! You know, a little more on edge, a little more like what. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's it. it. That's exactly what, what the scared the shit out of us. What the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we got a couple of those looks. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. We were in Vegas once, and I don't know the I don't know the particulars about it, but there was there was two tables going on. There was our table, there was over here, and then there was a table that was next to it. And at our table, Chuck was there with a couple of his friends, and some there was some dude. It was some some drug dealer type character or something. I don't know who he was. And then it was some large black gentleman, and the large black gentleman got quite mouthy. Oh. And he got Oh yelly and he was screaming in someone's face and Chuck stepped up around behind his buddy and stood right in front of the black guy and started talking to him and the dude literally turned two shades lighter color <laughs> like you could see the look in his face he was like what the fuck have I gotten myself into <laughs> Chuck Liddell is literally inches from my, my and I don't know what Chuck was saying because it was loud <laughs> That's all you could do. but you could see Chuck looking at the guy going like this talking to him and the guy was eyes. shaking his head talking at the same time oh, oh man wow. it was terrifying it was you remember terrible. what you said chuck or no um yeah i mean i just i just was do you like, remember the situation I remember, yeah i remember uh, he had a problem with some small guy i mean i don't know what happened exactly but it was like basically i was just letting him know that there you're not going to do anything just sit down go go back to what you're doing we can be cool the dude's but mouth you're, you're opened not, you're not you're not doing anything yeah sorry. yeah you can tell he was not going hard. any further well, yeah, not what i like I about this further, this is the sorry. nice version where yeah. yeah he was having a hard time getting oxygen to his brain cuz his <laughs> his mouth opened in the shock cuz he was all angry and aggro and he was doing this thing that a lot of dudes do where they get their their knuckles above their head and then they come down with their fingers start pointing <laughs> he was doing down, this yeah. and then when chuck showed up the hand dropped and his mouth opened. <laughs> well, you could tell he was like having a hard time getting in air. He's like, "Oh Jesus, I gotta stay calm." Here. That's like the worst situation you could be. It's like this isn't just any schlep no. coming over that you're like, "Yeah, I might be able to take what this guy." He's getting in my face. It's that. like no, it's it's Chuck Liddell. Yeah, and it's not it's no my confusing. This fucking tattoo on his head, the mohawk. <laughs> yeah. You know what you're getting. And he's staring at you with that hundred thousand oh, yard brutal. stare. Oh, yeah. That is brutal, oh, man. We're gonna it was take, funny. We're going to take a quick uh, break. I just want to see if Penn's here. So Yeah, cool. Quick break. And we'll, he is here? Oh, fuck. This show is... Shazam. Right. Just yeah, continues. Right. Yeah. Uh, Penn, and is Teller here, too? Just Penn? Uh, just, just Penn. All right, we'll wrap up next with Joe Rogan, Chuck Liddell, Ari, and, uh, and Penn. Stay there. This is Sirius XM. The Opie and Anthony Show. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. Let's talk about it. Now I gotta see that. Now we gotta talk about it on the air. That sounds great. So we got Joe Rogan, we got Chuck Liddell, and now we got Penn Gillette in Hello. studio. 
And uh, he already yeah. knows what you were going to say live on the air because of his damn Twitter. The Twitter, they uh, tell you yeah. everything, you know. Yeah, they, they talk really to don't. you on the Twitter. They send you stuff, and they said, and and I apologize so much. <laughs> you just, uh, I, you're absolutely right. Whatever happened is true. <laughs> I apologize for it. You know what I just realized? Penn has some, some parts of his voice sound a bit like Jesse Ventura. Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah. the libertarian parts. No, yeah. There's something about his, his voice, and I was just thinking, well, what a great combination to be. Bullshit and bullshit. <laughs> you know, your show, which is calling out bullshit, and his show, which is embracing it's it. Complete and bullshit, loving yes. it violently. It could be a complete, it could be a complete symbiotic yeah, relationship. Be amazing. Just completely it's a cycle it yeah. right through. Uh, talking about thermite paint. Thermite paint. <laughs> down the In trade those centers. Really? Did they paint the walls F while people were working in Freeze there? Freeze ball, fall speed. Have you ever, have you ever seen a, a, a crew come in to destroy a building yeah. with the work that has to be done before they actually press the button and bring it down? You're telling me they did that while people were working in there and not a, didn't upset one cubicle? Really, yeah, Jesse? Oh, uh, you're well. I was a Navy SEAL. I know. Uh, whatever. I serve my country. Did you? I'm uh, glad, proud of your service. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm sorry, but that doesn't mean I believe that fucking someone went in with a paint roller with a uh, fucking coyote from the Roadrunner paint and fucking brought down the trade center. You fucking oh, nut. Thermite. <laughs> My paint. What's your Navy SEAL physics and chemistry change? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I was a, excuse me, sir. I was a demolition man. <laughs> and he was a demolition dumb. man. Really? Yeah, okay. we, we, we played this. Uh, we did this like Q&A thing in, in uh, Florida, Florida State University. And it was where the, um, the, the ta don't tase me bro thing happened. Oh, it was yeah, in the yeah. actual room. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, did you feel and, it in and the, the air? And the guy, <laughs> and the guy that booked us was the guy that told the police officer go over there and shut that guy up and it was great because uh, the culture of tase me bro you know don't tase me bro is 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 national right but at this particular school this guy stood up and you know the first question of the night he stands up and three video guys stand up with him <laughs> and he goes uh i want to ask you a question mr gillette and i go sure and he goes you did the bullshit show without watching building seven go down i'm calling bullshit on you the 9-11 was a conspiracy and he goes on yelling at me and the great thing was the audience you know 1200 people Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. Tase him. The chant just starts, and it's really hard God, not damn. to laugh your ass off. Of and he finishes point. And I, you know, I said, no, I, I haven't watched. Uh, I certainly saw the video, but I didn't watch it in detail. And yes, I've read some of the stuff you said, but certainly not all of it. How can you go on TV without reading everything about it? Then no one can go on TV right. about anything ever. But no, yeah, no I, I, I am ignorant of some of this. And I'm, but the whole time I'm talking to this guy in like a, a standard kind of Q and A thing, the audience tase him, tase him, tase him. <laughs> just <laughs> fabulous. Those it's nine eleven truthers, yeah. some of them are so fucking crazy. You almost wonder whether or not they're government agents designed to make the nine eleven conspiracy the look ridiculous. Yeah, 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 to make yeah, it look silly. Like like Joe Rogan. Yeah. Really? <laughs> some of them are so over the top, fucking crazy. But you about know, it. I, I read this thing, and then I haven't been able to find it since. So it's possible when I say I read this, it means I made it up. <laughs> um, but the the uh, the the Lincoln assassination, the Kennedy assassination, any big sort of uh, huge tragedy, it seems like 15 years later, you know, 10 years later, you get this whole conspiracy thing yeah. that pops up. It seems mm. to be just part of the way human beings deal with things, because it's so hard to believe that Lee Harvey Oswald, one loser nut, yep. changed the world that much, and it's so hard to believe those 9-11 um, people did that much to everything that much. You better. believe Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone? You know, yes. Really? I, I you know, I'm not sure. There's stuff up there, yeah, but the thing that convinces me the most is the Luis Alvarez, who won the Nobel Prize uh, physics uh, in like the '60s, who was uh, JFK's really good friend. There's a paper that he wrote in the Physics Journal that just came out in like you know '68 or something, uh, Luis Alvarez. That is very compelling. He does the sound stuff and that kind of things. Although I've heard people very knowledgeable um, uh, debating this. So I've heard really... arguments on both sides that make me lean one way or another, back and forth. Yeah, and go, you hmm. go back and forth and go, Depending oh, on what I you read. absolutely believe yeah. it's a conspiracy. Yeah. 
Wait, I absolutely but, believe it was one I, guy. What I think about is uh, the emotional thing. I so desperately want to think it was a bigger cause than that. Right. That, mm. I, that I fight against it a but little bit. But that's, I think that's the whole gist, uh, gist of, of, of the conspiracy exactly. and why people embrace it. It's because you, you want to feel like you're safer than just a few guys that can do what they did on 9-11. You want to think that it took some massive conspiracy. No, it took a few people that really hate us to do that. But evil, and that's it. Evil is so rare. Evil mm -hmm. is so rare. You never encounter it. You encounter people who are wrong all the time. <laughs> you encounter people doing stupid things all the time. But someone choosing to do something evil is so rare that I don't think we're good at processing it. Yeah, we, hmm. uh, and I think we want to be part of something bigger. Sure. It's and, better to have yeah. an evil god than no god to some people. Right. It's, you know, yes. chaos is so frightening. And the mm. fact that we're all struggling desperately to do our best and we still fuck things up is to some people a horrifying. I thought. Did we all? Were we all under the impression that like uh, the White House and the Pentagon and everything had these missile banks that would come up and shoot anything out of the sky that was trying to come toward Washington? And then you realize, no, no. The, it's just like any gig that you have, any job you've ever had. Yeah. People just fuck shit up. They drop the ball. They don't listen to the guy next to them, and that's exactly what happened. But even worse than that. They do the best they can. Yeah, yeah, and that's the best they that's can. That's the scary part. There are times when I have done all my homework, all my preparation, <laughs> been focused, worked hard, and still been a devastatingly uh, incompetent fuck up. Yeah. And that's what terrifies Not me. Not on the bullet catch. The, the person, yeah, that would the be people, tragic. <laughs> the people that don't prepare and don't listen to the guy next to them, that works into my worldview. It's the guy <laughs> with a good heart who's smart, working as hard as he can, that then fucks up my Just life. Just missed that's something. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. You know, doing his best. There's doing his best <laughs> and a better job than I would be doing, <laughs> and he's fucking it up. There's something intoxicating about secret information, about oh, yes, uncovering yes, yes. secrets and uncovering like UFO shit like I have friends that are just fucking obsessed with UFOs and they like you know did you see the newest video like no matter it's what like, it is they just I, I, there was a great quote yeah. from Spielberg which was just this fabulous quote where he said I'm so surprised that with all the video technology mm -hmm. everybody carries with them we're not getting more UFO uh, mm -hmm. video yeah. Yeah, I was kind of like the... wonder why that could be Steve well, yeah. let's, let's think about that every single motherfucker on the planet <laughs> has video running 24 hours and the no more videos coming out right, of right. UFOs. No matter no. what happens, someone is videotaping it. Uh, yet, uh, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, we were getting these still photos, <laughs> yeah. Polaroids, UFOs all over the place. Now everyone's got it. The phones are cameras, and we don't see shit. You don't see much. Don't you see, see some much. great CG work that some people do in their basement. You're like, wow, it looks pretty good. That's yeah. right. But it looks too good. You know, yeah. I've seen a few of those where uh, it looked like a genuine uh, flying, some type of alien flying device. I think the idea of something from another planet that has to come here in a big metal ship is just yeah, yeah. so archaic. Yeah. Like, if there is something that's so advanced, you know, whether or not they've been around, maybe they're in a solar system that doesn't have asteroidal impact issues, and so they've been allowed to evolve for a million years ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. They can probably just go but wherever the fuck they want. some fog bank. But, but yeah, They exactly. arrive in a fog bank. And as they look a... like a tree. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why do they, why do they have to be a metal ship? Yeah. Evolution is not going toward intelligence or exploration. Uh, evolution is a crapshoot, and you can be very highly evolved, like a cockroach, and not go to another planet. So the f mm. another million years of evolution, without the sur without the savanna, without the looking for 3D vision for fruit, without the walking <laughs> upright, without the campfires, without all of that stuff, you get an entirely different outcome mm. so you can evolve if it forever goes in that way and, and it still, doesn't yeah, go to intelligent go life yeah. right i guess but yeah. you're also go intelligent and not uh exploratory yeah why does right. interplanetary uh, exploration have to be the be all end all of intelligence it's like well they're so intelligent of course they'd be able to travel here it's like maybe that isn't their thing or maybe they don't want to <laughs> maybe they well, don't they even want, want to. to yeah i think there the are things that i'm smart that enough you... to do that i don't do because <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> there are things that i'm smart right. even a guy like me i'm yeah. smart enough to do certain things i don't do them 
Yeah, I bet given the instructions, I could defuse a bomb. <laughs> I choose not to. <laughs> yeah, I saw Hurt Locker. It doesn't look that tough. No. You put the suit on, you go in, cut you snip a few one. wires. It's but always, you know what? Don't not cut me. that wire. It's <laughs> always that. Yeah, right, right. Uh, blue or red. Blue or red. too late. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, it it I think probably the idea... feels pretty great when you defuse a bomb. You know oh, what? It probably, probably does. does. I'm sure it does. I mean, it feels awful, 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 awful great. <laughs> <laughs> awful, 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 awful. Which is, which, you know, for sex, a lot of times it's like that. Oh, 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 great. Oh, oh, great. Same feeling. You know? Hey, <laughs> Penn, what are you doing in town? We know, but for the radio audience, because uh, you, you saw something last oh, night. Yeah, I saw it. Well, we, we did Jimmy Fallon, which was exciting, because yeah. I got to be in a, uh, in a room with Leon Russell. And the incredible thing is, we walk over to Leon Russell, you know, just to blow him. He's the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> I don't know Tell who he is. Leon Russell, uh, piano player yeah, uh, for a... Joe Cocker, but he's also just done an album with Elton John. But he played piano for Sinatra, Phil Spector. Everybody. Everybody. Long, yeah, long gray so hair, Spectre. long gray beard. You've seen this guy. Nuttier than a shit house. Yeah, you've seen this guy. And, you know, he's in like a wheelchair with a cane, just being so much well, credit. a cane with a wheelchair. Well, no, he was, he was in a cane to get to the wheelchair. <laughs> oh, okay. But he's got, you know, this beautiful <laughs> long white hair. Sticking the spokes wheelchair. Just crazy, <laughs> crazy. And we walk over to him, you know, and I just go, hello, Mr. Russell. My name is Pan Teller. He goes, hi, nice to meet you. And he goes, glad to hear you talk, Teller. And all of a sudden, oh, it washed shit. over me that he knew something about us. <laughs> and I'm like going, why are you wasting your time watching Penn and Teller when you could be playing the piano? <laughs> but then I went after that and saw uh, saw Book of Mormon, you know, Trey and, Trey and Matt's show. Yeah. And I think it might, present company excluded, it might be the greatest thing I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, I could not believe how it, it was just, it was so, you know, art, the purpose of art is to inspire. And then it gets to a certain level, and it makes you want to give up. You, know, you, listen, to, you listen to Bach and go, I don't have anything yeah, to Am I going to pick an instrument up and really try to be proficient at <laughs> this? Yeah. No. And, uh, this is so good. It is a moment without even uh, a moment of cynicism. It's pure. It's beautiful. It's, uh, it's just loving. It's funny, funny, funny. And uh, it takes apart uh, religion in a beautiful way, but replaces with that this kind of love and beauty. It's just, it's the greatest thing wow. ever. Wow. I mean, they've been working on it. That's a fucking been on it seven, They've been working on it seven years. And, uh, seven years. Yeah. And I, you know, afterwards I, I saw Matt and Trey and just said, I, I just couldn't. And they, you know, I was so effusive that they thought I was bullshitting them. Oh, really? You cross over that it's like, line. wait a minute, I, said, I think he's fucking with us. I, yeah. I said, you know, Trey, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. And he went, oh, I was hoping you'd like it. I said, no, no, it really was. Because you, know, you, you go, it, it sounds like bullshit. There's so much Hallmark card yeah, shit yeah. out there. And I have seen, it's true, I have seen a zillion shows and gone up and said afterwards, that was great. The episodes you, that they did of their the show where thing. they were drawing, where they had Muhammad yeah. and Muhammad yeah. was in a bear oh, suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of one really of so the good. most bizarre moments in our culture that this is tolerated. Yeah, yeah. That this nonsense is tolerated, where you're not even allowed to draw to this draw guy. The uh, and, and figure you're gonna, of on Muhammad, Comedy yeah. Fucking Central, you're going to go along with that and, yeah. and censor this because you know there's the, the cartoonist in Seattle, yeah, yep. who did draw Mohammed Day, who was put into witness protection. Uh, you know. Uh, not not witness protection, wasn't a witness, but put you know underground, changed her name and everything with no money from us. You know, we gave her no money whatsoever. She did it on her own dime. Lost uh, her whole career, which was a cartoonist, oh, wow. which is a hard career to get. And, you know, people want that a lot. Took all that away from her because she did draw Mohammed Day. Mm -hmm. And you know, people were saying, well, what what could the government do? And I said, you know, Obama could go on and say, you know, I have respect for religion. I really like it. I respect everybody's right. But you know, we have freedom of speech here. So I'm going to draw Mohammed. And while I'm on the subject, <laughs> I, have, oh, I, have, I have I have seventy five <laughs> um, FBI guys. Who have volunteered to draw Mohammed with me on camera, and there's their name. And by the way, they're all packing, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they're all happy to do that. So these people you need to go after too, because I think you can show respect, but you should not force people to do something out of fear. Yeah, and respect and fear are two different things. Well, they just take it to the deepest level possible. We'll if you even people. draw our dudes, we'll yeah, kill yeah. everyone. We'll, we'll right. kill you. You're and not even allowed to draw our guy. And that doesn't seem like. Just some radicals saying that. 
That seems a little kind of it creeps into the mainstream part of that religion. I don't yeah, know. Yes. Or at least at least the mainstream part of the religion isn't saying, hey, don't go killing people for drawing Muhammad. They're like, well, you shouldn't draw him. Yeah. I'm not going to kill you, but <laughs> well, well, you'll Rushdie, probably get killed. Salman Rushdie still has to hide. Yeah. He's still hiding. Yeah. And that was like and in the know, 80s, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he on, he on Hirsi Ali. You know who wrote Infidel? Who's my, you know she, she? I write her email now and again through incredible number of remailers. Wow, really? And yeah. she says stuff like you know, um, I'd uh, when I'm in Vegas, I like to come visit you, and I always write back and go, maybe, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe you could just see my children and not me. <laughs> yeah. uh, no. but, but you know, she. I don't know if you read the book Infidel, but it, it's amazing. She, her death threat, um, uh, Theo Van Gogh, the filmmaker in Holland. In broad daylight, stabbed through the heart. Oh yeah, with yeah. a note that said, "I'm going to kill. Someone's going to kill Jan or CLE. So, getting a threat that is pinned on your friend's chest <laughs> through yeah. his heart and kills him. How do you live with that kind of terror? Yeah, you know, just horrible. And she's she lives with this all the time. I mean, Solomon, they've backed off on a little bit, but Jan or CLE. I was talking to a security guy that was handling her speaking and said, "We just finally gave up." When she's wow. going to appear, the death threats are so constant. She was supposed to speak on this cruise, you know, a s skeptic atheist cruise, and they just finally said we can't have her on the ship. Wow. What was her? Uh, what What is Infidel? Infidel is her um, autobiography. She's uh, Somalian, and she went from being um, a religious and beaten by her father, and her clit slid off, you know, cut off and shit, and all this stuff to being an outspoken atheist with everybody in her family and many people in the world trying to kill her. She went to the Dutch Parliament and so on. And the story of Infidel is amazing because it showed you do not ask the American military to do something you don't want them to do. <laughs> uh, they called. Uh, they called the U.S. and said, "We can't protect Ian her CLE. She just got this knife. We're scared. We can't protect her. Can you guys do something?" And then she writes about how she's in her apartment the day after. Uh, special ops guys from the U.S. just show up, wreck her cell phone, take her out. She can't tell any friends. Put her on a plane, fly her to Logan. Then get her, uh, you know, uh, a military plane, fly her to Logan, and then drive her to Maine, <laughs> and then put her in a little hotel where they rip out all the phones and everything, and put a guy sitting next to her with an automatic weapon and a guy out front and say, now you're safe. <laughs> and she goes, no, no, I want to talk to my friends. I want to do something. They go, our job is just to keep you alive. Wow. We don't care about anything else. And the whole book is, you know, her sitting, talking to the guys, going... But but I need to have some sort of life. And he goes, hey, you're not dying on my watch. <laughs> can, I, can, I wow. out, can I go out and get something to eat? I'll send someone to get you anything you want. All I know is you're not dying on you're my not watch. Dying, wow. yeah. Yeah. So she just basically outlined, she, her, she told the story of her life, yeah. you know, and yeah. yet that was enough to... Well, no, she also... She also criticized you know, the religion. Being an apostate is the worst thing you can do. It's worse than being us. It is being a member of a religion and then leaving it. And she was a devout Muslim, and now she is an atheist, and you can't do worse than that. Wow. And yeah. she's a woman. Which wow. is you know oh, another. Quite. That's the first strike against her. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, she and you know and she got this award that we got. Uh, we got it one year and she got it the next for this you know free thought type award. And we had to do this video that uh, that you know congratulated her and kind of gave the award over to her. And I said you know we're completely behind you, Ian. Unless by being behind you, it means a fatwa is on our heads. <laughs> In which case, we think you went a little too far. <laughs> and she is also unbelievably hot. Really? So she is smart, brave, and sexy. Without a clit. But really, yeah, yeah, it, right? that thing. Fact. It doesn't help me. <laughs> <laughs> But it, she's uh, she's an amazing one of the true heroes of our time. And you keep in touch wow. with her. Well, not much. I mean, I don't. <laughs> hey, 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 the same state at the same time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close to don't each other. Don't try to get through to her through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if you if you want her on your radio no, that's show, okay. <laughs> she will come. We got Joe Rogan. We're and good. she will come on, and she'll do it free. But it is something like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of security. Wow. To get, and then once you have her sitting at the mic. Everybody is trying to kill you. Well, actually, they're not trying to <laughs> What a crazy fucking religion. Do you really think that the way to combat that is for someone like Obama to get on 
TV and actually say something like that and draw a picture? I mean, what? How do you somehow or another uh, I think, calm down I don't know that well, storm? It's the question is whether you want, and I don't know the answer to this except for myself, which is I won't. But um, <laughs> right, I don't know whether it. it is better to show respect or whether to stand up stand up against it. I yeah. mean, when, when, the, when the Danish cartoons came out and mm -hmm. American uh, papers wouldn't print them, right. I mean, that's a yeah. very big decision. Mm -hmm. And they say they didn't pre print them out of respect. But and, it's fear. There's well, a difference. Well, yes, that's the whole argument. Yeah. I mean, if, if they printed them out, if they did not print them out of respect, that is a defense defensible position. If they didn't print them out of fear, then we got to rethink that Home of the Brave thing. Well, you know what? I, yeah. <laughs> I've seen uh, I've seen pictures in the paper of piss Christ, yeah, sure. where it's the crucifix in urine in the jar mm -hmm. with the light behind it, and maple syrup, uh, right? And the yeah, no, uh, no that's so, um, Serin. Oh, what the hell was his name? So it begins what with an S. Maple syrup, yeah. dude. Didn't he do something like that? Maple that was Thorpe the, didn't do that one. Maple he didn't do piss there Christ. There was the, um, but it was the same time. Mary, Mary made out of elephant manure. Yeah. There's another one. You it's don't like, say shit. But, You're but the, yeah, yeah, M -m -m manure shit. Manure. Uh, they, but they put that in the paper. <laughs> now, out of respect for the religion, they because they knew but, Catholics were, were very upset with this, uh, they probably shouldn't have put that in. But they know that the place isn't going to get firebombed well, I used for to the do most a, part. a bit about how you never see a Catholic suicide bomber because none of us believe in it that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Catholics you know, are like, eh, we I'm not really sure. <laughs> right. We did bullshit. It's out in my head. We did bullshit <laughs> for eight years. And we were, uh, I mean, just last night at the uh, Book of Mormon, I had a chiropractor come up and, uh, and start, oh. start, uh, start, uh, hassling me. Giving you a little shit. And, yeah. Yeah. For that. But it's amazing. That people say, you know, why do you guys pick on Christians? And, uh, why do you not mention Islam? And the, the answer is very simply because Christians do not hurt other people overall. Overall. I mean, yeah. We have, we have, we have abortion. Mm -hmm. that uh, anti-abortion people have killed some people, and that is unforgivable and horrible. But the fact is that I am able to say whatever I want about Christianity without fear of violence. And one thing I learned on bullshit was incredible respect for Christians. I mean, mm -hmm. I go to bat for them all the time because I would get letters saying, it's nice to see you stating your opinion passionately. I uh, I believe in Christ. I'm praying for you, and I I love your show, and you do a wonderful job. Stuff like that. I mean, just if you want to talk about the purity of the marketplace of ideas, you know Thomas Jefferson's dream. I'll tell you, the the Christians hmm. in America in the 21st century have got it fucking down. That's and what I don't you said. know. Yeah. I I don't know if I believed in my heart that abortion was murder. I don't know if I would have the restraint that so many people have on that. <laughs> and when we, of all the shows mm. we did, we get asked, you know, who gave you the most hassle? And the answer is the 9-11 conspiracy people. Yeah. They're the only ones that showed up at our offices and threatened people there and called people who worked on the show at home. What do you think uh, happened to oh, Christians man. to make them the calm Christians of the art today? Just that it's so successful? Because if you go back like, to oh, the Inquisition, oh, man. Yeah, that's so mean, they, Galileo, they, they did go through their phase. <laughs> you couldn't even say that the everybody. earth wasn't the yeah. center yeah. of the yeah. universe. Yeah. 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 They threatened to burn you if you fucking said the earth wasn't the center uh, of the universe. Say. I think one of the things that happened to them was the Enlightenment, and nothing that happened to them was America, what is she which doing? is a really, really good idea. Some girls jumped I guess she's down. engaged. Oh. Oh. Are, are you engaged? Yes, I just got engaged a second ago. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Look at you. I know. Oh, I know. man, it's a mashup uh, marriage. Where, where's your guy? He's right here. Congratulations. Hey, there you go. Nicole from the Morning Mashup. Very good. Congrats. Yeah, weird that. timing, she's but all congratulations. Like, that's, all so like, <laughs> that's how chicks, how important marriage is to them. I know. Right? We're in the middle of talking about <laughs> religion right, right. and freedom and people dying and what happened Jesus. in America. Yeah, is, I just died. Oh, my God. Look at the precious. Look at the precious. She, she, all, she, all, <laughs> she held that ring up. Uh, we all want to pretend that we cared. And we didn't get the oh, same has it. We didn't get the same reaction from the guys like yeah. Yeah, he was just like uh, also we were really good at reacting, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, congratulations. congratulations. She, she, she felt door. so hey. entitled. She opened up the door while a radio show was going on. Yes. Had no idea what we were talking about. Going waved, deep and led with her the ring. magic ring. She led with her ring. Yeah, it came in first. Came first, in first, yeah. Precious. <laughs>
Holy shit. <laughs> that was really weird. Uh, uh, I'll tell you a marriage story. The <laughs> answer is... <laughs> enough, enough of that. Yeah, take listen, a seat. Listen to Uncle Anthony. Yeah, I, I'm going to set you straight. I'll spin you a yarn about marriage. It's a little thing called <laughs> divorce. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, and we can even spell it because it's country western music. <laughs> we still haven't seen Ari's asshole. Oh, great. What are we doing, Joe? You want to see? You want to see Ari's asshole? Yeah, yeah, sure. Hit yeah. play on that thing. Is. What is this called again? Jew clam. Jew clam. Yeah, you can go to jewclam.com. No, I think I have. I think it's already up here. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's a show. There you got goes. any sound? Uh, I don't. Uh, you don't want to hear anything. You just need to see it. No. We're, <laughs> it watch. He shows it. He's gonna. He threw toilet paper at him. He's gonna turn and show his asshole as he's wiping. He's Wait, taking a shit so with the door good open. And color commentary. This is thank you. It's natural we, for me. We this is uh, the Austin, uh, the Cap City in Austin, the green room. And now here, Ari's gonna. We figured we had it dumb the showdown. There it goes. <laughs> what? What's he doing? Why? What are you, oh my God! Oh my God! You got hemorrhoids. You got hemorrhoids. Oh, I thought you were shit sticking out of my ass. <laughs> It's precisely as advertised. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm not one to sell you a bag of what fake things. <laughs> False bill of goods. <laughs> no, this is exactly what it's supposed to be. Is that it? He, um, you think, or is well, it you can. Or we go close up. Oh, no, there's too much time left in this video. We have, we have, we have another minute to go. Oh, boy, that's not... Oh, his pants are up. That's not a good sign. Oh, my God. You've had girls lick your ass before? One girl lifted. She was just. Do, yeah. Now it's recapping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I wasn't into it. I was like, this is like licking my knee. I don't, this doesn't do anything for me. Uh, his asshole's calloused up. <laughs> yeah, that really is. Wow, all right. He, he said he doesn't like having his ass licked. It's like, it's, uh, uh, mid when it's mid inflamed, it's bad. Really? Yeah, yeah. it is. That was a bad one. Wow, you really um, aren't shy when it comes to things like that, huh? I thought it was shit sticking out of my ass. I didn't realize that it was an inflamed hemorrhoid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I just hadn't gotten it all the way. So separate. you wanted a second opinion <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> well, we're doing, we're What's eight months later all about? That'll follow you. Oh, we took a picture of it eight months later. Because he wanted to let us know that it's all healed. Oh, there you go. oh, oh geez, God. That looks uh, like Homer's mouth. That really is. <laughs> kinda, it's disturbing. Now, this is much later. He's going to show you that it's all healed up. Uh, much better. Wow, oh, infrared. Uh. <laughs> what's, what's, that's, that's crazy. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> we got issues. <laughs> We're bored. Being stand-up comedians, man. <laughs> just, not having boundaries isn't always good. Yeah, that's true. You kind of Joe Rogan dot net. Go off. <laughs> so a little advertisement. Sure. Let people know sure. where where to look at Ari's asshole. Yeah. Well, you got Why that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then what his the big hell ball is bag. going on here? Yeah, yeah Penny's got a huge ball bag too. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, he's Book got of Mormon, one of the greatest works of the uh, <laughs> yes, of the new yes. century. But Book of Mormon. Right next right, to right right this. <laughs> when does Book of Mormon open up? Uh, I don't know when it opens. I got oh, it gets cost five hundred and nineteen dollars for Charlie Sheen. What? Up to. Wow. Sold out New York City Jesus. shows. What is he going to do? Uh, next week it opens. It opens next Thursday, I believe. Next Thursday? I'm going. Book you need to go. You need to go. I'll go. Time. What is... Well, it's a play, right? Just it's, a, it's a musical. It's a musical. A musical. And a musical that you will actually... Did you like uh, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut? Yes. Loved okay. it. Loved it. Uh, I believe it's better than that. Ooh, and it's live, words. and it's amazing. Team America is the funniest thing. I, yeah, I never yeah. laughed harder in a movie than Team America. I believe it's better God than damn. both of those. That's and incredible. I love them both. That's incredible. Well, why, why don't they put it out like as a movie? So. Well, I mean, the, the, when you see it, it's the perfect form for it. Oh, really? I mean, one of the cool things about it is that it's not a movie. You know what I mean? Oh. They're actually doing it. They're there in front of you, and you have... All the actors really doing it in real time is great. And, you know, uh, another thing, if we're going to rave about the United States of America, and the audience is just out of their minds cheering. It's really? this really, it's, it's as purely blasphemous as it could be <laughs> with a humanist, just love everybody point of view. And the, the audience is going absolutely crazy. If you have any cynicism in you, like everything on Broadway is shit, and they just do this fucking Spider-Man garbage all the time. <laughs> This will just wash that away. Not only will you love Trey and Matt and everyone in the cast, you will also love everyone in the theater with you. When you say blasphemous, though, isn't Mormonism in and of itself blasphemous? Well, not within the Mormon church. Uh, but this is blasphemous 
to whatever supernatural beliefs you have, they are contradicted in this show. Have they taken any shit for uh, for this? Have, I believe been... none, because we're living in the fucking United States of America, well, where you're allowed to say what you want, and you true. know something? Gonna... We really believe that. Mormons are pretty <laughs> relaxed about it. Yes, I've had, they're Mormons chill. are amazing. I've had a bunch of Mormons come up to me and say they thought my Mormon jokes were funny. Oh, sure. really? Yeah, well, I, yeah okay. I used to do a bit about, you know, the, the reason why Mormons are against gay marriage is because if someone can talk you into being a Mormon, they can probably talk you into sucking their dick. <laughs> like they have to be careful of that shit. You know? <laughs> God damn, yo. And I've had Fucking a lot of joke. Mormons who come up to me and they think uh, it's joke, funny. Man. Yeah. That, is a, that is a fabulous joke. <laughs> it's true. That's why they're scared of it. Wonderful. That's why they're spending so much money. They don't. They don't know. You know. They don't want to all of a sudden find themselves in love with a man and yeah, not even know yeah. how it happened. Uh -huh. But there you've got. You know, you've got. You've got a religion that is completely whack job. Yeah, yeah. In every single way, and yet when you point out that it's whack job, they do not hit you. Yeah. They do not right, threaten you. Right. It is astonishing. You don't have to they worry don't that even do economic beheaded. boycotts, really. They're very They're nice people. Very nice. And they kind of win you over by just, I mean, just such politeness, so nice in every way. You know, because I... I've never had a drink uh, of alcohol in my life, and I've never had any uh, recreational drugs, which I know you don't approve of, Joe, but I, I you're that. so tolerant. Disturbing. You're so tolerant about it. And I will go to, uh, I will go to like, you know, every Things doctor. I could show you. <laughs> every doctor in, um, in Vegas is a Mormon, you know. Really? And, and, oh, yeah. What's well, a huge, huge number of Mormons. And I'll go in, and, I'll, and they'll, you know, they'll go through the whole thing and go, oh, oh you must be a Mormon. And I'll go, well, except for that, you know, believing in God thing. <laughs> we kind of fall down. There. Yeah, but you got everything else. Just one little step. It's not one little step. That's a you don't big go step. from not drinking coffee to believing a guy got golden tablets from Jesus in the 19th century in upstate New York. That's, that's a really big step from not just like that. He was 14. <laughs> Who's not full of shit at 14? <laughs> Everyone's a goddamn. He's, Joseph Smith found these things at 14, and when they said, well, where are they? Oh, the angels came and took him away. Yeah, he, took him. he had a magic rock, a seer stone that he would use to look through to see these golden tablets to oh, read you just, them. Yeah. You just held up your iPhone, which you can't see shit through. That was a pretty bad example. He just tried to do it through the case. He held up a glowing rock. He said he thought he had a rock, but he could see things. And then he held up something that you could see things in. Uh, almost, yeah. your whole argument. almost proving the point that he might have seen something in that. Uh, well, Joseph Smith's a known con man. Man, too. That's the yeah. most amazing thing. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, much like you know the guy who created Scientology, L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard, Hubbard was, also was a just fucking a science fiction, mediocre author. science fiction writer. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the whole thing with uh, Scientology. I I finally like I had heard about it so much years ago that I was like, I want to know what this is. And as I'm reading it, I thought I I thought it was a goof on the religion. I actually thought I was reading a, a parody of the religion. It's like, wait, this is really it. You know, Thetans and fucking holding on to the sensors, yes. and you have to drink, and, and there are actual aliens and the battle and the throwing the fucking people into the fire. And, what Zenu. the fuck? Zenu. Yeah, Zenu. Yeah. Yeah. I, was in, I was in Germany, and they had a 24-hour uh, camera uh, that was trained on Mecca. And I'm watching this in my hotel room. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's 24 hours they have this. And there's this this building, this square, like, look like a shed in the center. with like It's very fancy. And everyone's milling around this, this center. And they all have the same outfit on, this very traditional white robe. And there's thousands of them. And they're all like, a, like one of those ant swarms. They're going in a in circle. A circle. And I'm looking at this. I'm like, if this was a new thing, <laughs> if this was something that someone had just invented, in Ohio, and there was a new religion that just started, mm -hmm. and they all had to go around this box and circle it. People would be fucking tripping like, out. You're nuts. They would be yeah. freaking out. It'd be scary. It'd be well, that's, dangerous. That's the re amazing thing about Scientology is we watched it grow. Uh, I guess not literally in our lifetimes, but pretty close. Pretty it, it close. Didn't, it yeah, didn't start yeah. much before we were born, and uh, it, it's amazing to be at the at the birth of that kind of thing, and then to imagine how much more powerful that stuff is if. If you don't have mass media, I mean, we have, we have video of Elvis Presley. 
Right. We have film of Elvis Presley. We have audio recordings. And yet you hear people say, Elvis didn't do no drugs. I mean, even in, <laughs> even in, uh, with evidence that we trust, people can say, Elvis is alive. Elvis did this. Elvis did that. And Elvis was alive during our lifetimes. And people can still make up shit when nothing in the scriptures was written until 300 years after supposed Jesus Christ. You've got to say 300 years and they got everything right, yeah. even though we can't get things accurate on Kurt Cobain? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we yeah, up, and we can write. We can write Kurt Cobain. Did, you know what I mean? He wasn't really that good. You know, we can write that down yeah. and remember it, but you know, it's just it's just astonishing. So if it happened uh, present day, I, I mean, uh, we're seeing the crazy shit of Scientology. And granted, Scientology is not that successful. Both the people against it and the people for it pump up the numbers. But even having over four people believe in Scientology. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You say not that successful. Well, first of all, they're the second largest real estate holders in Los Angeles, aren't Is they? Is that true? They own, they, yeah, that, they're trying to separate Hollywood so right, that they can own Hollywood. Really? They have yeah, a tremendous to amount of money and win. influence. Trying to and, you know, anybody that's life. ever tried to criticize them, I mean, who wasn't there someone who was trying to write a, a, a movie about them, yeah. a parody movie, and a guy got attacked and they threw rocks through his fucking window? They, they, they used like to have, they, they, I think they used to have some pretty hardcore lawyers that would go after anybody that said anything bad about yeah, Scientology. Well, it seems like they calmed down with, with that, with the litigation thing. They but uh, but that's, that's a really, yeah. for PR purposes. That's a really good point, uh, Joe. I mean, when you talk about Hollywood, uh, I think there's a huge influence. I'm not sure, and I, I may be wrong about this, I'm not sure if in mid, mid America they oh, have much. Yeah, I can't, much I can't they won't really even see. let them in uh, in <laughs> Germany. Germany is really? illegal. Yeah, they, yeah. Scientology, they're oh, like, wow. no, we, we know where not... this is going. <laughs> We've seen <laughs> we something the like the this in the previous. Let me go. Master race, rockets from the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been here. Fuck that. Monsters from the sky. I mean, nothing is more futuristic or apocalyptic than the World War II scenario. Oh, I know. It's, a man it's who has a vision of a master race, genetic engineering, and rockets flying through the sky, it's, slamming, and then not only that, but the, 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 the most a, a advanced technology as yeah. far as like rocketry and, and, and aviation. And, yeah. and you think Churchill was that crazy bad? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is. It really is. How many, how many sci fi movies have just been based on that? whole idea yeah. is that uh, you know star wars if, if star wars isn't fucking nazis uh uh the empire isn't nazis i don't know what is yeah it's, i watched it's... inglorious bastards well, the other about day nazis oh god yeah. Nazis. Oh, yeah. you said if, if that isn't Nazis, what is? I would say Nazis. Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Put that way. That's a good I point. really did sound That's silly there. Do you ever watch the show uh, Ancient Aliens on the History Channel? I just got, yeah. I just yeah. got turned on to it. Ridiculously stupid show for the yeah, most yeah, part. Yeah. But for every the now and then, oh, they, <laughs> they talk about some interesting shit. And they had Aliens and the Third Reich. And it was all <laughs> about it, about the uh, the Nazis, how into the occult they were. And how into, like, uh, like you know, like Tesla's work and all they were trying to come up with all this, you know, the crazy technological advantages over, over the enemy. And they yeah, were, yeah. How they were they, doing some nutty how shit. How they never got the bomb first is pretty amazing. Just well, because they, they were just, spending time on the fucking occult stuff. Yeah, on the That's occult why stuff, see? They were working on real just explained it to you. And, you and said that, yeah. but if no one was working on the bomb and that occult shit, if they kept working on it and figured something out, yeah. I mean, who the oh, fuck yeah. knows what they were up no. to? No. No, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about non-science based. I'm no. saying maybe some of it had to do with science. You know what? What they were doing was some pretty intense. And in you know they were they were looking like deep back into history. To Hitler the, doing the Hindu... street magic. <laughs> Take a card. They were looking at the Bhagavad a, Gita. Fury, that's and... just a that's just a thumb tip, sir. Yeah. <laughs> with all due respect, uh, Hitler, that's a thumb tip for you. It's really interesting how fixated they were on like ancient cultures and. You you know, and then the the the, the yeah, a lot of the knowledge. symbolism yeah. was taken from it. Yeah, well, the the whole uh, the Roman the swastika Empire. itself, swastika yeah. wasn't it's a good but luck you know, sign. Yeah. If you want to build an atomic bomb, and I know you do, Joe, if you want to build an atomic bomb, it's better to go with new technology than old technology. Yeah, this yes. is true. The information yeah. on the nuclear bomb from 600 years ago, not that good. <laughs> not that good. Won't get you there that quick. It's very true. <laughs> Unless societies existed at a, at a very high rate uh, many times in the past and been wiped yeah. out. I, yeah. I stick with my original point. 
You I think so? I don't think there were uh, advanced civilizations that exist. I think we know pretty much what's happened for the past 50,000 years. Yeah, mm. uh, well, I don't think so. I think not only that, but more more recently, they've been showing that there is, in fact, a lot of evidence that there is advanced civilizations that were wiped out. Have you ever How studied advanced? any John Anthony West stuff? No, or not at all. Robert Schock is a geologist at Boston University, and he's one of the main guys that's working on trying to uh, change the ideas of uh, ancient Egypt. And one of the things he does is he's talking about water erosion on the Sphinx. The Sphinx is, uh, you know, this huge structure, and it's most people believe it's built about 2,500 years ago but what the problem is the sphinx enclosure has massive fissures that were created by thousands of years of rainfall and the only time and they mortars. had rainfall the last time they had rainfall in the nile valley was 9000 bc so what this guy is saying is that most of this stuff there's stuff that's from you know 2500 bc but there's also shit that's probably from fucking way earlier and there's really? different styles of construction very clearly different styles of construction zali zawi hawass is the main guy the head of uh, the Egypt studies over there in Egypt, and he's the guy, the head of, uh, he chooses who gets to, you know, study things and where you get to dig and what you get to do. He's very resistant to any ideas of predating, you know, the, mm -hmm. the ancient Egypt culture. Yeah, yeah. But this is uh, geology. This is <laughs> geologists look at this and say, you are dealing with thousands of years of rainfall to create these fissures. There's no doubt about that. This is very clear evidence. And the last time there was that kind of rainfall in the Nile Valley is 9,000 B.C. But that still doesn't get you back, you know, to an ancient civilization that was as advanced as ours, and it still doesn't get you back more than 10,000 years. Well, mm. you're talking 9,000 B.C. is more than 10,000 years. Oh, well, it's 11,000 okay. years ago, and you're dealing with someone who can make something, <laughs> yeah. can make something yeah. incredibly yeah. complicated. Yeah, you're sure. talking about incredibly complicated, massive stone structures that were created back when they supposedly were just learning language. I mean, language is only thought to be thirty to 40,000 years old. Yeah, but old. now you're talking about an advanced civilization that still just built something out of rocks. Show me an airplane. And you're talking about what would be left? Like what would be left? Though? This is the big know, question. Landing gear? If, it would, if, if there was something like a super volcano, and you know North America was wiped out, and then thousands of years later, you know they they come back here, fifteen thousand years later, and they start digging through the rubble, what the fuck are they going to find? How many stones? Stone? 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 <laughs> they'll be here. <laughs> what are they going to find? What are they, well, I mean, they're going to find that in mm. 2011 there was a guy on the radio that couldn't add nine and two and give away. <laughs> 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 that, that, that one stupid mother. Fucker should have probably shut up. He said 9,000 BC. I said nothing yeah. more than 10,000 years ago. I'm, I'm still embarrassed. Well, they I don't might think there's some... anything left. I mean, they, you look well, at those pictures of Detroit. Flaming hot fucking nuclear piles <laughs> from their <laughs> nuclear <laughs> power plants. Have you looked at. What? Yeah, how about an iPhone? One of them. What one of them mean? would make it. The iPhone. No, one that iPhone. Would be gone. One, one that thing would be eaten up by the earth in a hundred years. But there would be nothing left. No, stone would be. That's the thing about the Egyptian structures. Big parts of the iPhone. Get the fuck out Some of here. Metal? This thing would be rotted away, man. This thing would, would be, be gone. You would have a chip in there. Uh, 10,000 years later. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I don't so. know about that. I, I so. mean, we, we, we were assuming I that I I bet if there was an advanced civilization... <laughs> I bet you $5 dollars in 10,000 years. <laughs> You're on, Vegas boy. <laughs> I know how you Vegas fucks like to gamble. <laughs> now, all we've got to do is live 10,000 years yeah. to pay this off. I mean, if you see what's going on in Detroit, how the, the, the nature is reclaiming buildings... Quickly, real quick. Oh, in Russia? Yeah. You know, there's yeah. been a, a lot of yeah. uh, ancient... Uh, like uh, not even ancient, excuse me, you know, 50, 60 years buildings in Russia that are like eating up with trees. Trees are growing inside of yeah. them, pusting through them. But you look at uh, the surroundings of Chernobyl and stuff yeah, where yeah, they just yeah, that's abandoned what shit. About. It looks yeah. pretty creepy. Trees just grow right yeah. through buildings, crack through the concrete. Sure. 10,000 years. We can't even wrap our heads around what the fuck that is. Yeah. 10,000 yeah. years. It wouldn't I be much left. I couldn't even add nine and two. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was, uh, like, that there's was a guy sad. named Graham Hancock, and he's got this fantastic <laughs> book called Fingerprints of the Gods, and it's all about ancient structures that defy explanation, and most of them have alignments that are, uh, they're, they look exactly like constellations, and there's some sort of a, uh, a connection between constructing these things and, you know, trying to recreate what they see in the sky, and that this is occurred not just at one part of the world, but many parts of the world, suggesting that this was something that was done on a massive yeah. scale, you know, many, many thousands of years before we thought of, you know, as human history. I mean, they've had to predate a lot of things very recently. There's a structure they found in Turkey, this really complicated stone structures that were like 12,000, 13,000 years old. And you saw the thing they found in uh, Spain. They believe they found what might be Atlantis. I and mean, this is like real, legit geologists and archaeologists are but saying why just stone? 
Like, and then you're saying, what's going to be around left. in 10,000 years? How about the stone stuff we made? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, will so that be that, around? That will probably Some be around. Fucking, the the lions buildings. in front of the cornerstones and in shit in front of the library <laughs> something like that you know maybe i mean but my, not much else but all what you might be seeing is you might be seeing remnants of how powerful slave labor is too <laughs> <laughs> that's well, true the problem yeah. with that is they don't even believe slaves built the I know, pyramids oh, i know that i know that i, I know that that yeah. stuff's out there but i'm just saying you don't know that the older stuff couldn't have been that i mean when people are when you have human life being cheaper there's certain shit you can do really well like carry rocks yeah mm. but the numbers are so huge i mean some of those monoliths that they they found that they, that haven't been moved yet that are hundreds of tons yeah. and perfectly cut and fucking enormous yeah. there's yeah. a lot of evidence well, they have at least plenty to, of time on their hands time. they really did i don't think they that's had, enough they had 10,000 years yeah. they also <laughs> had to eat and they're running around chasing squirrels and shit trying to hit them with rocks to <laughs> feed themselves I mean, if you talk whoa, about 12,000 years whoa, 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 whoa. ago, you're, you're talking... saying the most advanced civilization are chasing squirrels with rocks? Well, yeah. we're you talking about ways. what we're talking like a microwave about. microwave that rotted away in 2,000 years. That's his point. Our yeah. vision of 12,000 years ago as opposed to what may or may not have happened. If we look back, I mean, we think 10,000 years ago we were basically throwing spears at woolly mammoths. You know, mm -hmm. that's our idea of, of humanity. Wait, you went from a squirrel to a woolly mammoth? And from a rock to a... You just went 8,000 years ago. Squirrels were very big. I'm, I'm big at flipping back and forth between animals. <laughs> <laughs> From squirrel to woolly mammoth. Well, whatever you need to eat. That's your new book, isn't it? Yes, that's, my, that's the title of my new my new paper. From, From squirrels, squirrels to woolly mammoth. Paper. Yes. From rock to spear. The Joe shit, Rogan story. We, shit we ate while we made buildings. <laughs> Gotta dumb it down. Yeah, it's a fascinating thing to me because when you look at what's going on with this giant earthquake in Japan, and you know, and you, you see all these different cataclysmic disasters that happen, and then you look at the fucking Yellowstone one is the one that freaks me uh, out no the most. Shit it does. The super volcano in Yellowstone oh, is a caldera the... that's fucking three hundred kilometers wide. Three hundred kilometers wide. It's a volcano that's so big that when it explodes, it doesn't have a peak anymore. It just leaves this big crater and kills like ninety percent of the continent. It's a continent killer. It happens every six to eight hundred thousand years. Yeah, we got time, right? <laughs> got Last time, time it happened was we'll six hundred thousand years ago. I think we'll make it. Yeah, they have thousands of earthquakes there every year. Yeah. Thousands, thousands of Ugh. earthquakes. God, and they, they have no idea what's going to happen. Whether or not, it, and it, but if it does blow. There's nothing left. There's we've, literally nothing left. And that's happened many times. We've got to do something about this. There's nothing you can. Enjoy we yourself. Stack something we, don't need it. we just don't need it. Somewhere out there in space is a five-mile-wide piece of iron that's going 45,000 miles an hour. <laughs> when it hits, within the first second and a half, it will be five miles deep into the Earth. Within the first second and a half. And it doesn't matter. It's a reset button, and we're fucked. No reset, what. yeah. There's nothing you can do to stop that. It's just that another fucker. fucking Gulf of Mexico somewhere. Mm -hmm. The Yucatan. Another that's Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah. And, uh, Anything bigger than a fucking rat, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> the rat's got to then yeah. evolve into something else. And how does that happen? In 65 million years, the whole thing was done. Everything was done except for little tiny animals, and then it became this: this elephants, birds, what? giraffes, from squirrels to woolly yeah. mammoths. Yeah, it's yeah, from squirrels, squirrels to woolly mammoths. The, the See, paper. It all, we brought it all right around. You've got to bring that around. Sure. <laughs> it's amazing when you really think about that that well, that happened yeah, in 65 is. million years. But 65 million years is a long time. Mm -hmm. And that was the kind of the point you were making before. It's a About, really long yeah. time. I, I find it amazing how long the dinosaurs uh, were, were on Earth, yeah. uh, as opposed to how long we are. And they, so does my four-year-old son. And the, yeah, see, dinosaurs, <laughs> the same kind they're of taste fascinating. You know. I love it. <laughs> little toys at home. What's really dinosaurs. fascinating is <laughs> fucking crocodiles, yeah. like dinosaurs that are still here. Still yeah. here. Yeah. That's... If there wasn't a crocodile... And you saw a, a movie with a crocodile in it, you'd be going, could you imagine if that thing was real? Well, that's, that's true. like a monster. That's they true don't have to yeah. fucking almost breathe everything. underwater. Yeah, that's true like, for almost everything. I mean, spiders. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. A praying mantis. <laughs> that's true. Have you, you heard of a praying the... mantis? You see that motherfucker. <laughs> have you heard of the Brazilian the wandering spider? You want to talk about a motherfucker of a spider? The most toxic spider known to man. This spider's killed more people than any other spider, and this is how it kills you. Was it you. one particular spider? Yeah, the Brazilian wandering no, I mean, one spider. Just one spider. Oh, yeah, serial killer. <laughs> killer spider. This is how it kills you with incredibly painful, unending erections. 
Huh. What? What? The toxin from this spider Wait, makes, Brazil? causes Figures. nitric oxide. Yeah, from Brazil, of course. See, more crazy shit from Brazil. On. You first, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you first. And by the way, they're actually using it as a cure. They're trying to use it as a cure for erectile dysfunction. You because first, it creates Joe. nitric right. oxide, a massive uh, supply of it where your dick, if you survive this, your dick's broken. Because it's basically <laughs> you redline your dick. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Blow it out. And it just, boom, blows pistons through the fucking, through the what manifold. The and it's done. I mean, it, 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 it kills people, but the people that it doesn't kill, your dick is done forever. You're, it wrecks your sexual life. You no more, no more harm. Now, this, this comes from biting you anywhere. Yeah, it doesn't have to bite you on the dick. That's which right, no. you're right on the very tip of yeah, the right dick. Yeah, right on the tip of well, your it dick. It causes, you know, very because painful. guys try to fuck them. Massive <laughs> pain in all your muscles. Massive pain throughout your entire and body. And the spider's just walking around out yeah, there? Yeah, just walking. Well, it's a wandering spider, too. It doesn't have a spider. I'm just saying, who's got a little stick? I mean, this stick with a bandana with his goods tied on it. Yeah, it was like actually eight of them, I guess. It was really it was really a setup to my point. Why would you ever go in the woods or hike in that area? Don't find us. Terrifying. Don't ever go anywhere where money doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't ever go anywhere Something where money doesn't matter. Some words ethic. to live by, that Lloyd. Is, that I, is went, I went into the Everglades by. once, and when you haven't got, if you've got a I'm thousand dollars in your hand. And it won't help you. Doesn't you matter. don't want to be there. Right. Right. You don't want to be there. Yeah. Oh, don't man. ever go anywhere where money doesn't the matter. The Everglades are quote, so yeah. crazy because people, these fucking assholes, go to pet stores and buy vipers and all these crazy fucking snakes, and they go, well, I don't want this anymore, and they throw them into the swamp, and now they're eating crocodiles. Have you seen that <laughs> shit? Have you seen that picture? There's a fucking photo I, I, of I, an alligator that's half eaten by a python. I don't believe that picture is real. Really? Oh, I, think think that, I, think, I think there was something on Snopes about it, but I might be I might be missing. Well, we have to look into that. But I know. Well, first of all, there's a show where they go but after them and kill them. There's dangerous shit in the Everglades. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not going. They're not indigenous. Saying there's not dangerous they're shit. alien species. I might argue. I might argue with you about exactly when civilization started. But dangerous shit in the Everglades. We are brothers on <laughs> no that. Argument there, right? No argument there. There's no argument. I, I don't went, have any knowledge about when civilization started. I'm requoting some I people was, who I was lied to by E. O. Wilson. <laughs> Who's that? You know, the, the entomologist who's the uh, who's the real expert on all ants, uh, E.O. Wilson's the uh, the uh, uh, biologist at, uh, at at Harvard and he cock and he um, I always whenever I say Harvard I follow with cock. cock you know, when yeah. people say why just why you say cock I say why you say Harvard. It just it reminds <laughs> you that every time you hear the word Harvard you should say cock cock because then it just reminds you that that might not be as important as they think if they went to Harvard. Cock. <laughs> but E.O. E. E. Wilson said to me we want to do a bit. On Letterman. Here was the bit on Letterman. I was reading something of E.O. Wilson's about pheromones, right? And that ants would follow the trails. So I thought, here's a boss thing we'll do. We'll go on Letterman, okay? We'll treat his desk with pheromones in the shape of the three of clubs. And then we will say we have psychic ants. We'll have Letterman pick a card. We'll force the three of clubs. Uh, Letterman will show it to the ants, will dump them out on the, his desk, and over the course of the whole show, the ants will spell three of clubs. How boss will that be? So I call E.O. Oh, Wilson, wow. and I go, will this work? And he goes, yes. I said, what kind of ants? So we talked to several entomologists, and they're all talking about different species of ants, and then someone says they're... They're in the, the Everglades. And I can't get entomologists to give me these ants. So I say to one of our crew guys, fuck it. We're going to go to the Everglades, find these ants. So I go with a guidebook Holy and a rent-a-car. And the one thing he tells me is, because he's got such a good sense of humor, is he says, when you go in there, in order to find these ants and dig them up and use them, you can't use any, um, any insect repellent. So no deet, no nothing. So I go into the Everglades, sweating like a motherfucker <laughs> in a T-shirt and shorts with a shovel and a guidebook to try to find ants that I could put on Letterman. And as I walk into the Everglades, fuck the crocodiles, I get attacked by every species of insect. And I'm, <laughs> so as God Shit, is my man. witness, swear to God, there were at least 12 wandering spiders right <laughs> on my dick. It was just horrible <laughs> and a nightmare. And I was in the Everglades glades with my shovel and my guidebook to our crew guy Robbie crying saying, never go anywhere that money doesn't matter never go anywhere money doesn't matter you want to hear a crazy ant statistic it didn't work it didn't work yeah, anyway. the biomass of ants is more than all the all the rest of life on earth you gonna give me that one no I wasn't gonna say that I was gonna say Shit. it's the same the the same weight as humans the amount of ants no uh, no 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 
all animals. Really? I don't know about that. I, think it's I read it recently. Right? Just, I read it recently. A lot of fucking animals. I read it recently that it's humans. that said it. So he's a lying sack of shit. Answer, he sent me to the Everglades. Most dangerous thing in Africa. They eat more things than anything. They eat elephants. They climb into the elephant's ear and just start eating their fucking brain while the oh, elephant's walking around. Jesus. Uh, yeah. well, Army <laughs> ants are a motherfucker, for, dude. For humans, for yeah. humans, wow. it's uh, mosquitoes, though. See, mosquitoes are the most because of malaria. Yeah, because yeah. of malaria and because of we us banning DDT in the most racist move ever done in history. Banning DDT is racist. Uh, uh yeah. It was essentially saying Americans oh, saying BET. We've we. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I always get that confused. <laughs> no, we we conquered we've conquered malaria in the United Jesus, States. Different kind so of So silent, <laughs> silent Spring comes out and we banned DDT worldwide and sentenced probably five hundred million people to death. That could be a uh, could. Wow. Wow, the, the banning the DDT was because of what reason? It was really a racist uh, it was a, reason? It was most, no, no. Mostly a book called Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. And uh, about Carson the eagle, the ZPT e e person? eagle legs. Oh, eagle, eagle legs, getting, legs getting all soft. and Probably yeah, not true. That's legs, right. The American eagle. But if those yes. people were dying of malaria in the USA, I contend that we would not have banned DDT. It's the fact that it was people in mostly Africa and India that that we decided to ban it worldwide, which we kind of did. In India, mm. they still use it some. But DDT is a wonder drug. DDT is like the polio vaccine for malaria. And we let it, uh, we took it off the uh, market. And, DDT uh, is a pesticide, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it really does take down mosquitoes. What is the really bad well. part? There must be something bad. Yeah, all sorts of bad. What's uh, the bad thing there? There's, there's a lot of bad but not as much bad as children dying of malaria. It's always mm. a trade-off. Wow, yeah. I'm a big DDT fan. I never would have. I never would have yeah. uh, had you yeah. as a DDT yeah, fan. I am, I tell am. you the truth. I, I, wear the <laughs> I wear the hat. I wear the hat. And I <laughs> cheer and I paint my face like DDT <laughs> yeah. on certain holidays. Well, what do they? What do they say is wrong with DDT? I don't. I'm, well, I'm ignorant about it. There's a book called uh, Silent Spring that said that it was going to go into our food chain and do all sorts of damage all the way up. Robin eggs were thinner. Eagle eggs were thinner. The shells of them, hmm. and there was all sorts of damage. Whether that stuff is true, uh, it certainly wasn't as true as they said. Certainly, you don't get anything good without trade-offs. There mm -hmm. is some bad about DDT, but 500 million people, you've got to have a pant load of bad <laughs> to let those people die. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Were that many people going to die from using it? Uh, yeah, probably well, not. Well, exactly. Yeah. That's the point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's very easy to be an environmentalist, a uh, hardcore environmentalist, when you are rich and white and living in the USA. <laughs> you know, when you're not battling Brazilian wandering spiders crawling up your <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Biting your dick, yes. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly the rainforest is going away, too. You ever watch, like, go to a, a website that shows you how much of the rainforest we're losing yeah. every day? I fucking it's terrifying. I haven't noticed from my house. <laughs> <laughs> I just look out the there, window, I watch TV. Cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same thing. Pine you. trees out I back. I don't care. The, um, what am I going to do? Yeah, the rainforest is disappearing at an incredible rate. And with the rainforest, a lot of wandering spiders. Spiders. Well, a lot of other no shit, homes. too. The, the fungus, the, the, these, uh, they, they're finding all these zombie funguses. Have you seen all these different... Uh, oh, yeah. I just saw that zombie fungus that was going right through uh, one of those... Uh, ants' heads. Ants' yeah. heads. and Controls the ants and yeah. rewires their brains. That's fucking... But the, 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 great, the article that I was reading a lo uh, quite a while ago about the, uh, the, the rewiring of the ants' brain had this great sentence in it that said... The uh, the fungus makes the ant do things no sane ant would do. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that, that our language is so great it can have the sentence do things that no, no sane, sane, sane ant would do. Ant. Hey, Bob's climbing up on the top of the st <laughs> the sheep is gonna eat him. That crazy motherfucker. There's some sort of thing in his brain. Get him down. Get him down. We're all reasonable ants. Aren't He's we? doing things look no sane him. ant would do. Look at look at Bob. And I know all ants are female. Fuck you. But he can still be named Bob. Right? Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. just give me that drill. There's men named Shirley. Sure. <laughs> Bobby. Right? Bobby Shirley. Sure. Bobby, find... Bobby the female ant. Yeah. I find one of the most amazing things is that it's Friday. It's and about a quarter here. to eleven, and only I'm still you guys here. would make us. Uh, <laughs> only you guys we would stay late for. I'll exactly. Right now. You guys usually exactly. leave. ten o'clock. Really? Yeah, but you yeah, guys are way it. too good to oh, pass no, this up. Is too on. much fun. What are you kidding? Well, you're talking about what saying ants will do and seeing a guy's yeah. asshole. Yes, That's a good yeah. that is true. In the rainforest. Uh, yeah. Did you hear about that guy that walked the entire length of the of the rainforest, really? the entire length of the Amazon? Took him eight hundred days. How about this? How about this guy that? that's yeah. going to run from pole to pole? They're calling the Forrest Gump of Australia. <laughs> I think his name is 
a farmer or something. He's a guy from Australia, and he's training by running 26 miles a day, a marathon every day. He's going to run 50 miles a day from pole to pole. I know there are problems with running yeah, there across are some water, kind of... but he's planning on doing that. And what I loved about this, being a fat guy, it's important to care about this, he has to take in 6,000 calories a day, so he has to, or no, maybe it's 12,000, 12,000 calories a day, so he has to drink olive oil to get enough calories. Whoa, and I'm watching this oh, and going, God. boy, I hate the idea of running, but that drink of the olive oil is <laughs> so, you know, Guys who climb Everest have to eat sticks of butter. You know? Really? Wow. Yeah. You, you just can't get enough calories into you. You're burning so many. So if you're running 50 miles a day, one of your big problems is getting enough calories, and the way to solve that is by drinking olive oil, which is very sexy. Oh, man, Jesus, that's that got to make for some nasty dumps. Just to run from pole to Greasy pole to say dumps. you did it. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I know. Uh, what, what is that nonsense? I agree. I don't know. 50 miles a day. Show the world. Yeah. 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 They'll yeah. shut up then. They'll leave me alone then it seems once so I run pole to pole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but how, everything must be, is. Everything yeah. is. There must be some crazy motivation from childhood. He's doing yeah, some yeah. wedgies that just will never <laughs> get out of his mind. He's doing some sort, of, it's some sort of charity thing. He's raising money for, I think, something that's uh, undeniably good, like fighting cancer or something. But he's, you know, he's not doing it just to... For the DD job. I want to get out of uh, he gets kids. to the yeah. pole, and yeah. right when he gets there, a polar bear eats his asshole. <laughs> <laughs> just comes running after him and just starts tearing his asshole apart but 12, right when they have cameras on him. a day. It's a lot of food. 12,000 calories a day. Yeah. yeah. That's how several does... pizzas. Iraq, how do you get that? Oh. Oh, see, because oh, we make fun because he's a little chubby. Oh, the uh -huh. chubbiness. Yeah. The He's okay. He's looking for a comeback right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, he's searching. No. <laughs> uh, just a, believe me. Well, he's just going to take but it in here. Eat, yeah. Done eating that. butter. Yeah, that that's... That climbing uh, Everest, I'm okay with. That sounds As a matter of right. fact, the list of things that I like about climbing Everest, <laughs> eating butter. Eating butter. It's on the top end of the list. list. <laughs> no, that's yeah. the end of the list. Oh, that's it. There's nothing else. Think of something else good about climbing Everest. Just seeing Wiggling the bodies. your toes every step so they don't fall Freezing off. Freezing cold. Not good. Freezing cold. Not good. Not being able to breathe. Not good. Falling to your death. Not good. What about seeing all the bodies, the hundreds? Hundreds of bodies on are the left way up. up there. Not good, or you put it on the positive. Not that could negative. Be okay, cold. negative. Good. Yeah. That's negative for me too. <laughs> but I just didn't want us to get into a little but thing about that. But how old does a dead body? From the internet, it's positive. What's that? From the internet, it's positive. When you're there in person, it's like, what am I doing? How <laughs> old does a body have to be before it's cool to look at? Like, if there's some explorers from the 1800s, <laughs> yeah. and there's their encampment, and that's where they died, you look and go, all right, oh. that's kind of cool. If it's someone last week, you're like, ah, body. So, With here, the North Face jacket on. Fuck that. Too soon. <laughs> yes, too yeah. soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon to look at a dead body. Too soon to look at the dead body. I think, body, looks old, I think it's once the shit smell in. goes away, you're okay. The once first the guy that ever climbed away. Everest. Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. I like that. Rule of thumb. Too soon. Too soon. Any joke you want to make, once the shit smell goes away, go crazy. You're You're in. Now, what did you it's guys okay. think about Gilbert Godfrey getting in trouble for tweeting all those? <laughs> yeah, they got things Japanese things. I, I'm, you know, I'm from the school of thought, as they say. Uh, anything, I, I think anything should be able to be said. But there are no, but there are consequences. There are no bad guys in this. A a Aflac is a uh, is an insurance company. Right. Being edgy is not an upside for an insurance company. No. You know, mm -hmm. I'm very good friends with Gilbert, and I talked to him a lot about this. And uh, I didn't know they were 75 percent Japanese. Amazing. Who knows? When Gilbert made those jokes, and everybody forgets this, Gilbert was making those jokes before he saw the future. You know, <laughs> we didn't know on that Friday uh, how terrible it was going to get. Right. And there is a certain line there. So Aflac did exactly the right thing, and so did Gilbert. You know, the uh, you have to say, when you are as brilliant as Gilbert, it is your job to society to say anything that pops <laughs> into your head. Now, without Twitter... That doesn't happen. Because without yeah. Twitter, he doesn't get to say it until a week later when he already knows shit. But none of us, and I don't mean in entertainment, I mean in the world, know how to use Twitter yet. So it's a it's a nutty situation that Joe, just while he was talking to us, sent out to a million people something that I said. He could have made a mistake there. I was know? going to, but I forgot what your exact <laughs> quote was. Don't go anywhere where money doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, when we're done here, I'll do that. But, okay. I mean, but <laughs> yeah, So I think, I think you've got a situation that's horrible with no bad guys. It's once again, you don't see mm. evil. It's not like the Affleck mm. guy said, I want to stop all freedom of speech, fuck him. Right. He was like, oh man, that's really bumming some of our customers. We got to stop it. Yeah. And, you know, Gilbert. It's a good take. 
Gilbert did not say, I have no respect for people who are suffering in Japan. That isn't part of it. I mean, as Joan Rivers said, and it's, you know, she's exactly right on this, uh, there are many, many ways of dealing with grief. Entombing the reactor is a last resort. This is the next thing they're talking about when it comes to this. Oh, so there you go. Jesus. Fucking so scary. 10,000 years oh. from now, that's what'll be left. Yes, yeah. a and boiling but not nuclear really, core. Not really that much more scary than the tsunami and the earthquake. I mean, mm. the tsunami and the earthquake will kill more people than the nuclear thing. Yeah. yeah, but the tsunami and the earthquake, when they're done, they're done. Well, no, they're not done. <laughs> this fucking That's thing a is a halfway for 20,000 years not done. shit. They're not done, they're done. They're moving the whole continent inches, noticeable amounts. They're yeah. not done, they're done. There's bad shit that happens everywhere. Well, I'm, 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 I'm definitely not doubt, doubting that, but I'm saying that this is a scary thing, this not being able to shut down nuclear power plants. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is this scares the fuck out of me, man. I was wondering about Japan moving. How far did they say it moves? Eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet. Was it that? Is yeah, that going to fuck GPS up? Where you're gonna? It's going to tell you to turn eight feet before <laughs> you're supposed to. But look, at the, look at the bright side. You're not going to be driving in Japan for a while. No. Yeah. No. Absolutely <laughs> not. That's something you don't have to worry about. City. Just get a driver while you're there. The satellites have no clue that anything moves. They yeah. just have a grid. And... But there's a gap in the ocean floor that's 50 miles wide and 270 miles long, where the epicenter was. And is that wow, where Godzilla man. is? Wow. Yeah. That's what's going to come out of there, man. Because I, uh, I mean, if we were ever going to get Godzilla, this that would. The time. Yeah, yeah, this is the time. It's got I nuclear think stuff. I think we've we shown it. the Godzilla's total bullshit. Where's Where this U.S. evacuation region? What the fuck is oh, that? That's about? where uh, no US American citizens. soldiers or citizens are oh, allowed to oh. go in. We, we, our, our zone's a little bigger than the Japanese yeah, one. They're like, nah, you We're not believing there. their zone. Yeah, like, we're, no, not, no. we're not buying that zone. But I don't think, we're, don't worry, we're not evacuating San Francisco. Well, it's, that, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. That's the, the, the weird thing when you see online, these, these cloud fucking scenarios. Oh, they were showing kind of, yeah, where radiation would go picked up on the jet stream and dumped on uh northern uh the north uh, pacific yeah yeah that's uh that's not good that's a little uh, that's a little I, but worrisome. i think it's supposed to be just a minuscule a amount like just a, a little like radioactivity well there's yeah, a lot like, of people that believe every time you go through the x-ray thing the new thing at the airport it's fucking up your dna yeah, yeah but i, I think those know. are people that are politically motivated possibly they said yeah. in Hong Kong right now which is however many miles away you're getting the exact radiation of one one hundredth of an x-ray Oh, see, that's hmm. not that that's, bad. We could take that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Did we, you, uh, we you had a thing radiation. at the TSA recently. I was reading it about that. It wasn't recently. It, it just showed up. It was in 2000. Too, that really? They, that I was I was I was against TSA before it was cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, a guy, a, a guy, you know, was was grabbing my, uh, my what? What did the guy say? A guy was grabbing my cock, junk. filling me up. No, no, it was junk for that guy. But for me, uh, uh, the uh, I what you always do at TSA. What I believe is, if anything goes wrong, you ask for real police. Because uh -huh. real police hate leather sniffers. You know, <laughs> they hate guys playing police. Right. Whenever you have a confrontation with a mall cop, you know, fake cop, if you get a real cop in there, he's, the dynamics always go to your side. Unless, on your you side. know, you're doing something really egregious. And so I went through, and this guy just said, hey, don't do that. And he started giving me some attitude, and I said, I call the police. And he said, no, we don't need to call the police. You've done nothing wrong. I said, no, I haven't. You have. Call the police. <laughs> and he said, no, no, you don't have to call. I said, no, no, I have, that's my right as a citizen. Get Metro in here. It was in Vegas. Uh -huh. And then the real police officer goes, says, you were grabbing his dick? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, I don't care. Really, anyone can grab my dick. You just have to ask me beforehand. I require dinner, anything. Right, right. I'm not homophobic. I don't care. Grab just my Just let cop. me know you're going to do but it. But I also care a lot about the Constitution, a lot about freedom. So it's a weird combination. You I just don't put need out to a protect. very strange invitation, I don't sir. need to protect. I don't need to protect my cock, but I'd like to for the sake of my country. Right. So my cock is a patriotic area. It's not, I don't, you know, I'm not afraid of anything. So um, do you think he was grabbing your dick just to humiliate you? No, 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 you? no. Yeah, yeah. It was just to, because. I showed a little attitude. Imagine me showing a little attitude. Oh, no. He must have misinterpreted something. <laughs> it must have been just I had a belch or something, and the look on my face looked yeah. like I was contemptible to him. And in 2002, <laughs> if you questioned anything, you were unpatriotic. That yeah. was the height of fever. Oh, my God. And you know what they yes. did, though? You know what the final thing they did was? Is after I did this little 
and I tried to do it very politely and through proper channels and stuff, through the police officer, the uh, TSA person in Vegas called up and said, you know, Penn, uh, we don't want to have any trouble with this. When you're going to fly somewhere, you just let us know, and we'll get you through without going through the security. I'll see. And yeah. I went, no, no, I don't want special treatment. It wasn't about me. It was about the idea of it. As a matter of fact, you're much more welcome to feel me up than the than the elderly ladies and the children who you're frightening to death. I don't <laughs> yeah. give a fuck. You know, that is the worst. But when it's you amazing. See old ladies getting uh, stripped, they like, get feel up, and their yeah. arms stretched out. Like, come on, give this lady's break. shaking. Right. She can't even <laughs> right. hold her arms out. Hunchback. She doesn't shit. know what it means. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 just it's just horrible. But that's you know that's what they do. And the reason I didn't, you know, the, the police officer said, you know, I saw this. He was acting wrong. You can go the lawsuit is I felt it would come across as this fucking Vegas magician thinks he's special and doesn't want people right, touching him. Sure. So I didn't want to come off like as that's that not kind the of point. Guy. But right. I want to say, I want to add to this that I've never taken that special treatment. I turned them down. Yeah. Because it just seems so fucking wrong. It's like, oh, you can go on TV, you can complain about this, let's take you through the special line. Now, I also don't know if that offer is available anymore. <laughs> I don't want people going crazy and saying there's a special line if you don't ever get checked. I don't even know if it existed. She could have been bluffing all <laughs> yeah. of it. I never found you out. She should it's, go through it with like... One Layers and layers of clothes on, sweating like a pig. <laughs> yeah. Looking, but I mean, it's it's uh, knows you know, what's behind that security. Door. It's security theater, and I think everybody everybody knows that. it. Really is. It's it's there to kind of make you feel like they're doing something, but uh, things slip through all the time. Yeah, didn't right? they just have a thing in the the, the post? But it was the Daily News or the Post. They yeah. showed knives and shit. They yeah. just snuck knives. Through. Just guy guy brought a box cutter on the plane, and I I think because it was for his job or something, and he had it in there and. And he's the one that said, like, look, I didn't mean to have this. And they freak out then. Oh, well, come on out. you got to come out. It's like he was fessing up to the fact yeah. that mm -hmm. he had it on well, him. You know, we also have the point that they put pilots through that shit. The pilots go through. Yeah, yeah. And the, you, the pilots, you know, He's they the, have a way to do it. They, yeah, once yeah. you're the uh, pilot uh, of the fucking plane, <laughs> you don't have to worry about nail clippers. You really don't have, yeah. Well, yeah do you they, remember that guy in Egypt, the, the pilot oh, that fucking man, took the plane down? Oh, man, crashed the plane, was, yeah. He's screaming, Allah Akbar. Mm, Allah yeah. Yeah, uh, he crashed the plane. He, what he, he laid a hammer over the co-pilot's uh, head yeah, or something yeah. And, yeah. and just decided, that's it. This is that's it. it. I'm going in. Time to wrap the problem it up. is, once you're going to kill everybody, including yourself, in the plane, hitting a guy in the head with a hammer, not that it, bad. Really not that I bad. Mean, <laughs> if you're looking at what you're going to do you're on the way to that, you know, that's, that's okay. Unless it's Once uh, you brain foiled, him, though, that's a commitment. You don't want to yeah, change you gotta, your mind after yeah, that. You can't worse, say Worse that. than saying no in improv. <laughs> there's there's a, a, an amazing story of a freight line. It's what it was FedEx or UPS, one of the airplanes, using an old one of those L ten elevens, and a uh, uh, guy wanted to uh, kill himself, get the insurance money for his family. One of these old gags. So he flies on the jump seat, has a hammer on him, and goes into the uh, flight deck and just starts beating the shit out of the pilot and co-pilot. Uh, and one of the guys got up, and they were major league fucked up in the head, like bleeding on their brains and grab this guy and as they're fighting the guy pulls out a knife he's stabbing one guy and the pilot who's also semi-conscious just starts rolling the plane over and now the co-pilot and the the hijacker at this point it's now a hijacker are fl are flopping from the ceiling to the floor of the plane he's trying to knock this guy out using acrobatics with the plane holy shit finally got him to the point where the co-pilot was able to hold him down and they landed the plane uh they went both wound up with uh really horrible head injuries and everything but landed the fucking plane and thwarted the uh the guy's wow. attempts to crash the plane an amazing story uh i i i saw it on one of those um uh, minutes before disaster wow. shows. That's crazy. Yeah, unbelievable. How many people in the fucking main cabin got fucked up yeah. landing on their head? It was, and it, shit was it was a freight. Yeah, it was, it a, was freight. a freight. It was, oh, a, it was freight a freight thing. Freight and some of the freight was coming out and smashing these guys. And wow. the way the story was told was just like, oh my god, that's horrific. The way the story was told was like they had a Phil Cable Television hours. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, and you I was right, right there watching action recreation. I love a good recreation. I know that way. 
that, that we have we have eight hundred we have eight hundred channels. They're running twenty four hours a day. You try to I fill them up, motherfucker. It. I great. love them. I can't get enough. We got to get out of here. Watch everything. Yeah, Ron and Ron Fez, Fez is starting like two on. minutes. Jesus. Beautiful. You guys can stick around for Ron and Fez. Hey, they love people. <laughs> what are the plugs, Joe Rogan? You just uh, nothing. Podcast. Uh, nothing. Tweeting Follow that, me on uh, Twitter. We're at Joe. See tomorrow night. Uh, Chuck Liddell. Anything? Just hanging. Ari, anything? Check at Ari Shafir. All right, right. Pendulum. We're at the Rio Wall Street Hotel, Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, <laughs> and Teller's show, Play Dead, is yeah. at the Player Theater. And you guys should go I'm to see Teller's going. fucking play. Didn't Jimmy go see, see it? it. Yeah, Jimmy told me I got to go now. Jimmy so. saw it, said it was amazing. Yeah, I'm, yeah, really I'm going to go check it out. What is it. Play Dead? What is it? Play Dead is a show that Teller wrote and directed at the Players Theater, and it's like an old fashioned spook show where you're in the dark and it scares you, and it's also funny and thrilling, and it's a really cool and where's show. Where's it at? It's at the Players Theater. It's right here in New York. York City. Oh, okay. And uh, and uh, it's great. It's great. It's a it's a one man show by Todd Robbins. But Teller wrote it and directed it. And it's uh, it's not really a one man show. There's a lot of people sneaking around in the fucking dark. <laughs> and now Teller's going to yell at me. That's no, crazy. it's a one man show. No one's sneaking around the fucking dark. There's no one sneaking around the fucking dark. It's a one man show. He's doing it all himself. Yeah, except for the people sneaking around the fucking dark. You retard. But uh, yeah, but it's just an asshole. All the time, man. <laughs> and he doesn't even do drugs. No, no thank God. So far, it's yeah. just. So far, there's that. still so far. hope. Yeah, I you might never go know. get fucked up with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that know. would be amazing. There's hope, <laughs> there's hope for the world. We're going to start yeah. our weekend, man. Uh, yeah. Pen's Light, it was a pleasure. Okay. It was a pleasure hey, just thanks, fucking checking guys. this Absolutely. out, man. Absolutely. A lot of fun. Hey. See you guys tomorrow. And go see his fucking show. All right, we will. We will. <laughs>